for the fall of 2021. Tonight we have the opportunity to honor a great class of senior athletes here at Crestview High School. We'd like to thank their parents for their support and their trust in us as school administrators and coaches to help shape them to the very best of our ability and bring the best out of each and every athlete here tonight. Tonight's senior night activities will begin with our senior football players. Our first senior this evening is Gage Bloodheart. Gage is the son of Ann and Jerry Bloodheart. He has been a member of the football team all four years of high school. Gage's favorite football memory was the time he scored his first touchdown against New London his junior year. Gage would like to thank his parents, sister, her boyfriend David, his grandparents, friends, and girlfriend for always supporting him. His advice to underclassmen would be make good choices, have fun while you can, and after graduation, Gage plans to go into the workforce or trade school to be a technician. Gage Bloodheart. Our next senior tonight is Connor Morse. Connor is the son of Julie Morse. He has played football all four years of high school. His favorite memory is pinning Coach Ritz in 10 seconds during practice. Connor would like to thank his family, coaches, fans, and all of his teammates over the years. His advice to the underclassmen would be it's not always a bad thing to be small, and after graduation, Connor plans to join the military. Senior Connor Morse. Our next senior is Aiden Gotzi. Aiden is the son of Mindy Gotzi and Ben Gotzi. He has played football all four years of high school. His favorite memory is when Coach Campbell made him and Caden Hill roll 200 yards for bringing air horns to practice. Aiden would like to thank the entire coaching staff for their hard work and dedication to this team. His advice to the underclassmen would be to show up to school on time. Aiden is undecided at this time about his plans after graduation. Senior Aiden Gotzi. Our next senior is his twin brother, Briar. Briar is also the son of Mindy Gotzi and Ben Gotzi. He's been a part of the Crestview football program all four years of high school. His favorite memory would be the goal line stand this year at Western Reserve. Briar would like to thank his mom for being with him through all, through all of it over the years and for the sport he's been playing throughout these last four years. His advice to the underclassmen is work hard and enjoy every second of it because it goes way too fast. His plans after high school are to attend college, but at this time he is undecided on a major. Seniors Aiden and Briar Godsey. Our next senior is Gabe Smedley. Gabe is the son of Paige and Matt McFarlane. He has played football for three years in high school. His favorite memory is messing around with Coach C. Gabe would like to thank his parents, teachers, and coaching staff for their continued support. His advice to the underclassmen would be to enjoy every day, whether it be practice, games, or off days. The days will fly by. Every day is a gift from God. After graduation, Gabe intends on running at the next level and furthering his education in psychology or criminal justice. Senior Gabe Smedley. Our final football senior is Tanner Moore. Tanner is the son of Haley and Mike Moore. He has played football all four years of high school. His favorite memory is going out to eat with the boys after practice. Tanner would like to thank his parents for the endless support, his coaches for making him the athlete he is, and to his grandpa for noticing his talents and doing his best to support him no matter the distance. His advice to the underclassmen would be to never give up no matter what obstacles come into your path and realize the only way to succeed is to accept failure. After graduation, Tanner plans to attend college and continue, continue running track and major in forensic science. Senior Tanner Moore. Our next senior is senior cheerleader Kinsey Warner. Kinsey is the daughter of Tina and Craig Warner. She has been a cheerleader the last two years. 
Her favorite memory is see, seeing her family in the stands while she cheers. Kinsey would like to thank her parents for the encouragement they have given her, and her advice to the underclassmen would be, would be to always keep a positive mindset. After high school, Kinsey plans to attend a four-year college and major in early childhood education. Senior Kinsey Warner. Our next senior is Abigail Hawkins. Abigail is the daughter of Robin and John Hawkins. She has been a cheerleader all four years of high school. Her favorite memory is getting to teach all the future cheerleaders at their cheer clinic. Abigail would like to thank her parents for always supporting her and her coaches for continuing to inspire her to be the best version of herself. Her advice to the underclassmen would be to always stay to yourself and don't lose sight of what's important. After graduation, Abigail plans to attend the University of Finland, Finley for a direct entry pharmacy program. Senior Abigail Hawkins. Our next senior is Holly Collette. Holly is the daughter of Michelle Collette. She has been a cheerleader all four years of high school. Her favorite memory is getting to cheer with her best friends and living off of B-dubs. Holly would like to thank her mom, brother, and friends for always supporting her. Also her coaches, Bailey Carpenter, Rhonda Carey, and Chelsea Hickey for teaching her all that she knows. Her advice to the underclassmen would be to do what makes you happy. After graduation, Holly plans to attend college for nursing. Senior Holly Collette. Our next senior is Casey Bentley. Casey is the daughter of Michelle and Ben Bentley. She has been a cheerleader for three years. Her favorite memory is being able to spend time with her best friends. Casey would like to thank her parents, sister, all of her friends, and Coach Bailey for their endless support. Her advice to the underclassmen would be to never forget what you're working towards and always have fun. After graduation, Casey plans to attend college and major in psychology. Senior Casey Bentley. Our next senior is senior cross country runner Tommy O'Neill. Tommy is the son of Tina and Tom O'Neill. He has ran cross country all four years of high school. His best memory is the time they crossed the finish line at state and embraced each other with a giant group hug. Tommy would like to thank his parents for always supporting him and also thank his coaches and teammates for always pushing him even when he didn't want to. His advice to the underclassmen would be no matter how crazy your goals are, if you push your body and your mind, you can achieve them. After graduation, he, pl he plans to pursue a, college, a career in computer science. Senior Tommy O'Neill. Our next senior is Brent Douglas. Brent is the son of Steph and Brian Douglas. He has ran cross country all four years of high school. His best memory is the bonds he has created with the people on the team and recovery days. Brent would like to thank his coaches throughout his running career and his biggest fan, Mrs. Curry. His advice to the underclassmen would be to enjoy your time. It goes quicker than you could possibly imagine. Also, don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone and take risks. Brent is currently enlisted in the United States Army. Senior Brent Douglas. Our next senior is Kai Rollins. Kai is the son of Mindy and David Rollins. He has ran cross country all four years of high school. His best memory is early morning practices because who doesn't like getting up at 5 a.m. to run with a group of other grumpy runners all to finish with a delicious breakfast at some random venue. Kai would like to thank all of his past and present cross country coaches. His advice to the underclassmen is if you put your heart and mind to something, you will succeed. Also, a soap on a rope is recommended. After graduation, Kai plans to further his education in industrial electricity with a future in elect electrical engineering. Senior Kai Rollins. Our next senior this evening is William, William Hummel. William is the son of Jennifer and Keith Hummel. He has run cross country all four years of high school. His best memory was at cross country camp his freshman year. It was there that he got to know his teammates and spend the season with them. He will always remember it was a fun, outgoing time to kick off his high school running career. William would like to thank his parents, grandparents, Sally and Jamie McGraw, Grandma Barb Hummel, for always supporting him. He would also like to thank Coach McFarland and Coach Haynes for always pushing him to do his best. 
His advice to the underclassmen is be yourself, be confident, and always run with endurance. After graduation, William plans on attending college. Senior William Hummel. Our next senior this evening is Colton Oliver. Colton is the son of Jen and Joe Oliver. He has ran cross country all four years of high school. His best memory was hard to choose since there were so many, but running at state his sophomore year might be his most favorite. Colton would like to thank his teammates for making the sport fun, his coaches for their hard work and dedication put into the team, his family for their constant support and management of his busy schedule, and lastly, he'd like to thank God for allowing him to run and represent him before others. His advice to the underclassmen is to take the dynamics seriously, stretch often, run not just for yourself but for your team, keep good grades, stay out of trouble, enjoy every moment because soon it will be gone forever. After graduation, Colton plans to attend a Bible college to pursue ministry where he can glorify God and fulfill his great commission. Senior Colton Oliver. Our next senior is Tessa Kuhn. Tessa is the daughter of Mindy and Matt Kuhn. She has been a member of the girls cross country team the past four years. Her best memory is the camaraderie warming up with the girls and qualifying for regionals her freshman year. Tessa would like to thank her parents and grandparents for supporting her at every meet, no matter the weather. She'd like to also thank Coach Garibrandt and Coach McFarland for shaping her into the person she is today. And her advice to underclassmen would be to enjoy all the little moments as a team. It goes by fast. And after graduation, Tessa plans to attend a four-year college and continue her running career. Senior Tessa Kuhn. Our next senior is Kylie Brockway. Kylie is the daughter of Stephanie and Dean Brockway. She has been a member of the girls cross country team the past three years, and her best memory is going on long runs with Abby and cross country parties on the weekends. Kylie would like to thank her family and friends for always supporting her and making her a better runner. Her advice to the underclassmen would be to have fun while you can and enjoy every moment after graduation. Kylie plans to continue her education in an environmental-based science field. Senior Kylie Brockway. Our final cross-country senior tonight is Morgan Welch. Morgan is the daughter of Misty and Mike Welch. She has been a member of the girls' cross-country team all four years of high school. Her best memory is the love and support the community gave her when she qualified for state. Morgan would like to thank her mom, dad, sisters, Coach McFarland, Coach Debbie, and Coach Garibrandt each for their undying love, support, and sacrifice through her entire life. Her advice to the underclassmen would be to just give it, give it all to God and don't forget to laugh a little on the run. After graduation, Morgan plans to run cross country and track for a private Christian university. She wants to go where the Lord leads her. Senior Morgan Welch. Our next senior this evening is Avery Donovan. Avery is the daughter of Christy Donovan and Mike Donaldson. Avery has played golf all four years of high school. Her best memory is Galleon Senior Night. They did a four senior tee off, also having a tunnel to run through and walk through. Avery would like to thank everyone who has supported her and helped her over the last four years. She could not ask for better teammates, friends, family, and coaches. <coughs> Her advice to the underclassmen would be to never give up, even if it seems to be the easiest option. Go out and be the best version of yourself. Keep playing golf. After graduation, Avery attends to plan the attends to plans to attend the University of Pikeville for early childhood education and become a volunteer EMT and firefighter. Senior Avery Donovan. Our next senior is Tyler Wheeler. Tyler is the son of Jill and Alan Wheeler. He has golfed all four years of high school. Tyler would like to thank his parents, teammates, and coaches for supporting him and pushing him to be a better player. His advice to the underclassmen would be you can't focus on the past. Focus on what's ahead. After graduation, he plans to pursue a degree in computer engineering. Senior Tyler Wheeler. Our next senior is... Josh Myers. Josh is the son of Christina and Adam Myers. He has golfed two years in high school. His best memory is going to districts this year as an individual. Josh would like to thank his parents and Coach Belcher for their continued support. 
His advice for the underclassmen would be to have fun with the future. After graduation, Josh plans to join the Air Force Reserves and attend college. Senior Josh Myers. And our final golf senior tonight is Jesse Keynes. Jesse is the son of Jesse and Shirley Keynes. He has been a member of the golf team for one year. His favorite memory this season is of drifting golf carts. Not sure how safe that was, but sounds like fun. Jesse would like to thank his family for always being a provider. He also wants to thank Coach Belcher and Coach Durbin for being big supporters and teaching him a lot. His advice to the underclassmen is try new things throughout your high school years. You only get four of them. Jesse will be joining the Air Force after graduation. Senior Jesse Keynes. Our next senior is senior soccer player Bridget Bays. Bridget is the daughter of Erica and Jeremy Bays. She has played soccer all four years of high school. Her best memory is growing up, playing with her friends the way through all the way through her senior year, meeting new friends, which my life wouldn't be nearly as enjoyable without. Bridget would like to thank her family, friends, teammates, and coaches for always pushing her to be her best and getting through adversity and hardships. Her advice for the underclassmen would be, conformity is overrated. Be who you are with pride. After high school, Bridget plans to attend college to pursue a degree in history. Our next senior is Anna McFarlane. Anna is the daughter of Amy and Trent McFarlane. She has played soccer all four years of high school, and her best memories are winning the NBC Conference three of the four years and her team making it to the district finals her freshman year. Anna would like to thank her parents for their never-ending support, grandparents for never missing a game, Coach Webb for all of her positivity, and Coach Pete for being there all four years and his huge part in the success of the program. Her advice for the underclassmen would be to play every game like it's your last. Enjoy every opportunity and friendship that comes along the way. After graduation, Anna plans to play soccer and attend college majoring in equine therapy. Senior Anna McFarland. Our next senior is Mary Leeper. Mary is the daughter of Shannon and Mike Leeper. She has played soccer all four years of high school. Her best memories of playing at the Columbus Crew Stadium and winning conference three of the four years Mary would like to thank her family, friends, teammates, and coaches for their endless support and unforgettable memories. Her advice for the underclassmen would be play hard as a team, never stop working on your game, but most importantly, have fun while doing it. The last four years have gone fast, so create the best memories and make them count while it lasts. After graduation, Mary plans to attend college while continuing to play soccer. Senior Mary Leeper. Our next senior is Frankie Densmore. Frankie is the daughter of Shane and Steve Densmore. She has played soccer all four years of high school, and her best memory, although she has, has many, is winning conference three of her four years. Frankie would like to thank her family, friends, coaches, teammates for encouraging her and believing in her. Her advice to our under underclassmen would be play with confidence and a good attitude because it makes the game more fun. After graduation, Frankie plans on college and pursuing a career in the medical field. Senior, Frankie Densmore. Our next senior is Peyton Collins. Peyton is the daughter of Heather and Billy Collins. She has played soccer for three years and participated in band for all four years of high school. Her best memory of soccer is being a part of two conference championships with great teammates and having fun and crazy drumline parties. Peyton would like to thank her parents and family for supporting her and her teammates. Her coaches and teammates for pushing her to be her best and her music teachers for their support throughout her high school career. Her advice to the underclassmen would be to take time and enjoy life. After graduation, Peyton plans on attending college to major in education. Senior Peyton Collins. Riley Salser is our next senior. Riley is the daughter of Sherry and Norm Thompson. She has played soccer all four years of high school. Her best memory is making it to district finals her, her freshman year and winning conference three of the four years. Riley would like to thank her mom, Norm, Coach Webb, and Coach Pete for their continued support throughout her high school career, and her advice to the underclassmen would be to always have fun and enjoy high school. After high school, Riley will be attending Waynesburg to play soccer and majoring in forensic investigation with a minor in psychology. Senior Riley Salzer. 
Our next senior is senior Nate Rawl. Nate is the son of Cindy and Brad Rawl. This is his first year of soccer, and his best memory is the first game of the season when Devin got to the post-game interview, and he said, and I quote, I play football, so I'm used to kicking long balls. Nate would like to thank his family for always supporting him in everything and coming to watch every week. His teammates for always being positive, encouraging him to try something new, Mrs. Callahan for filming games and bringing food, and to Coach Pond for never giving up. His advice for the underclassmen would be to find a passion, something that will make you want to play. Mine was you guys. After high school, Nate plans to attend college and major in physics. Senior Nate Rawl. Our next senior is senior band member Haley Whitmore. Haley is the daughter of Julie Whitmore. She has been a member of the band all four years of high school. Her best memory is the time they played bam being boozled on the way to a football game her sophomore year, and she threw up in her mouth. Haley would like to thank her family for always supporting her music career and never letting her give up and to Mrs. Wolf for believing in her and pushing her to be the best version of herself. Her advice to the underclass would be to have fun, make memories, don't care what others think, live life, take risk, and don't be afraid to try something new. After graduation, Haley plans to continue band and drama events within her community, and she also wants to take a piercing apprenticeship to study to be a vet tech. Senior Haley Whitmore. Our next senior is Owen Smith. Owen is the son of Lauren and Ben Smith. He has been a member of the band all four years of high school. His best memory is directing the band for the first time. Owen would also like to thank his band friends and his directors throughout his high school years for giving him the incredible opportunity that changed his life as a musician. His advice to the underclass would be, you're doing good, lad, mm-mm. After graduation, Owen plans to attend the University of Madison, Wisconsin, majoring in music education with the dream to study abroad in Germany. Senior Owen Smith. Our next senior is Kevin Spears. Kevin is the son of Donna and Jesse Spears. He has been a member of the band for one year. His best memory is the time he, he held James upside down while he played. Kevin would like to thank his parents for transporting him and to Mrs. Wolf for allowing him to join with such late notice. His advice to the underclassmen would be, if something looks hard, try it. You might find it easy and enjoy it. After graduation, Kevin plans to attend college for engineering and minoring in music. He is also escorted by his twin brother, Colton Spears. Colton has been a member of the marching concert and jazz band three years, pep band two years. His best memory is a time at Disney when all the guys hid, making the room look empty while doing room checks and jumping out at Mr. G all at once. Colton would like to thank his parents for all their sacrifices they have made and to fund his passion for music. His advice to the underclassmen would be, don't wait till the last minute to do stuff. Enjoy it all because it flies by and don't sweat the small stuff. After graduation, Colton would like to study abroad in Japan, studying to become a music or science teacher. Senior Colton Spears. Alyssa Henthorne is our next senior. Alyssa is the daughter of Debbie Henthorne. She has been a member of the Color Guard for four years. Her best memory is the Guard Sleepover, where they made shirts, played games, and had a lot of fun. Alyssa would like to thank her mother for her continued support over the years. Her advice to the underclass would be to stay focused, have lots of fun, and cherish every moment, because it will be over quicker than you think. After graduation, Alyssa plans to take time off from school and possibly attend college in the future to become a teacher. Alyssa Henthorn. And our final senior tonight is C.J. McFarlane. C.J. is the son of Tracy McFarlane and David Phillips. C.J. is a member of the cross-country team. He's run all four years. He's also a member of the band. His favorite high school memory is getting a whole tomato for free at Epcot and Abby eating the whole thing and sweat potty with the Dubois. CJ would like to thank his parents and grandparents for listening to him nerd out for hours and Mrs. Wolf and Mr. G for giving him constant sass as a form of encouragement. Coach G and Coach McFarland for pushing him even when he had nothing left to give and all the other senior runners for being like family. His advice for the underclass would be to play loud, and after graduation, C.J. plans to attend college and major in music education. 
Senior C.J. McFarlane. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Man, what should I listen to on the OH report today? Dude, listen to the Friday Night Pigskin. You got highlights and scores from all around the area. The OH Report podcast has more than just football. No, listen to the pigskin. The pigskin. 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 Podcast. Pigskin. Why not both? Pigskin. Podcast. Podcast. Dude, clean your ears out, man. Bro, there's so much space in here. Two state-ranked rivals take the field tonight with a chance to clinch the Firelands Conference Championship and remain undefeated as 8-0 Crestview continues their quest for the program's first 10-0 regular season since 2011, the same year they last beat Norwalk St. Paul, who enters tonight with an unblemished 7-0 record. It's live and free Saturday night high school football exclusively on the OH Report, and it's all coming your way next.
Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. You see how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Man, what should I listen to on the OH report today? Dude, listen to the Friday Night Pigskin. You got highlights and scores from all around the area. The OH Report podcast has more than just football. No, listen to the pigskin. The pigskin. 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 Why not pigskin? Podcast. Podcast. Dude, clean your ears out, man. Bro, there's so much space in here. Hello, Crestview Cougars. My name is Mason Minnick. I'm a Crestview alum, 2012. You are watching the Crestview Cougars versus St. Paul on the OH Report. Crestview is such a hardworking, caring community. And uh, I was fortunate to coach here for six years. Uh, and in that time, I got to work with some unbelievable kids. I got to work with uh, some of the best coaches in the business and uh, could not have a better experience and uh, just very thankful to the Crestview community for allowing me to be here during that time. The, uh, the Crestview football program is built with, with kids over the years that, that, that know it takes a discipline, a toughness that you have to come out and you have to work every day to win on Friday nights. It's a tradition that's built over a long period of time and has had tremendous athletes and tremendous kids come through. The coaches that have been here over the years have all instilled the same message. You have to work hard to get what you want. Well, this season's been exciting for everybody. It's been exciting for the coaches, the kids. Um, you know, we lost a lot of good quality players last year, uh, but we knew we had some, some solid players coming back. And, uh, you know, the kids have all stepped up. They understand their roles. They understand what it takes to be successful. Um, I think going week in and week out, you know, whatever we throw at them, they're, they're ready to take it as a challenge to get ready for that next team that we're getting ready to play. St. Paul week is obviously different. Um, it's the one you circle at the beginning of every year. Uh, you know you are gonna play the absolute best when you play St. Paul. Um, that week, there's a different feel in the school, there's a different feel in the air, there's a different feel in the community, and uh, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about on Saturday night. It's gonna be pretty special. When you play St. Paul, it, it's a big week. Um, we have a lot of respect for what Coach has done up there. He's been there a long time, and we know it's a challenge. Um, it, there's been some disappointments over the years, for sure. I think our guys are you know, buying into what we want them to do. They play hard every single play. They're pushing each other, and um, you know, they're, they're ready to go when, when we get ready on that Friday night or Saturday night when those games are, are ready to go. I'd like to say I just want to you know, thank everybody for supporting our team. Um, the way we've been, you know, going this year, but in previous years as well. I mean, no matter what the situation is, I think the community um, will support us. Uh, you know, athletic department supports us. You know, um, in, in that regard, so you know, it's very special for me to coach here, 
and I think it's special for anybody else that's, that's coaching with us as well. You know, it's, I said in the beginning, it's a tight-knit community um, that backs, we really back the kids here, always have. Um, so I, I look forward to Saturday night, um, the kids being able to, to show off what they've been working on all year long in, in a huge setting, and I'm sure it's going to be a packed Scott Bailey field. Uh, Coach Haverdale and his coaching staff have done an amazing job and, and they're going up so, against someone, one of the best in the business, and Coach Live and Good. So it's going to be amazing. Uh, I can't wait to see it. And uh, go Cougars. A league champion will be crowned tonight and keep their undefeated season intact as longtime rivals Norwalk, St. Paul, and Crestview battle it out to decide who will reign supreme as kings of the Firelands Conference. Good evening, folks, and welcome to Scott Bailey Memorial Field. Alongside Garrett Parlett, my name is Brian Skaronsky, and this is truly a historical night, G. Both teams entering the game unbeaten. Both are state ranked with an opportunity to score a league title. So we've got a blockbuster type of scenario in the stage. All of themselves, pretty cool playing here on a Saturday. Yeah, it's awesome playing on a Saturday night. There's not really any other games happening right now. So everybody's here at this game. Everybody's watching. Who wants to be the Firelands Conference champion? That's going to be decided tonight, and a lot of playoff implications tonight as well. Only one team can finish the night, though, with a story. Storybook happy ending, and it's been an awful long time since the Cougars were victors in the final scene of this matchup. Ten years to be exact. What is it about this St. Paul hurdle that is so tough for Crestview to get over? And I, I really don't think it's a part of the game. It's it's the, the mental aspect coming onto the field. St. Paul, they're, known, they're so nonchalant. They don't talk a lot of smack. They just go out there, and they do what they do, man. And they have, they've been beating Crestview for multiple years now. It's up to 10 since 2011. They have dominated the Cougars, whether it's here or up in Norwalk. So to give some insight to the folks at home who are watching, what did life look like in 2011, G? Well, Brian, I was in fifth grade at the time. <laughs> Me and Storm was. The number one song was Rolling in the Deep by Adele. The oh. top movie was Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows, And the last Oprah, Oprah Winfrey show was aired in 2011. Love it, man. Well, the last time the Crestview actually did beat St. Paul clear back in 2011 was right here in Olivesburg. We've actually got some video of that contest to show you guys as we're going to roll the moving pictures. And, you know, pretty much everybody on the team was in first and second grade. Back here, though, second half, the Flyers were up 17-14 in the second half. And then how about that? A scoop and score. This would make it 21-17. We'll fast forward you to the fourth quarter here in a second where St. Paul's Alaric Newcomer will go down the right side. He's going to set up an Isaac live and good touchdown run. 24-21 Flyers now. The Cougars. They got some time, though, G-Man. They're driving. Troy Stimper is going to find Tyler George. 23-yard hookup here. He's going to get down to the six-yard line, setting this up. Two plays later, part of the smash and dash backfield that they had, Garrett Montgomery is going to go in for the score. Four yards out, and Crestview comes back to win. Final chance for St. Paul, and it's going to get intercepted by Mason Minnick, who you heard from just a little bit ago on our hype. And wow, what, what a game that was coming down to the wire the last time the Crestview was actually able to defeat St. Paul. And look at the pack stands. We got about the same look and feel here tonight. And I love that we have Mason Minnick and the dynamic playmaker that he was to kind of compare to what we're seeing now for Crestview, the 2021 version, and Connor Morris. You know, he's a little guy, maybe have been overlooked throughout his career, but not in his senior season. This dude has been dynamic both offensively and then as a defensive hitter. Yeah, he's been stuck behind a couple big bags here from Crestview, but this was his year, his senior year. Got out to a great start, 1,261 rushing yards, 7.1 yards per carry, and 23 rushing touchdowns. This guy is the Ooh. engine for the Crestview offense. They're going, to, they're going to want to look to run the ball and then set up the pass off of that. And then on the other side, you know, kind of a similar style of runner that we have that I would compare pretty favorably to Connor Morris, that being Will Steber of St. Paul. You know, the Flyers 
they've been getting it done on the ground throughout the season, and they've really needed to rely on this guy. And, you know, he's not the biggest dude, just like Connor, but he definitely he, he gets it done. One of the leading tacklers on the team, actually number two. Very physical at the point of the tag. Will Stiber wants to get into the defenders and blow them off the ball. And he's got 840 rushing yards this season off 150 attempts, 11 TDs. And that is one of the backs St. Paul uses. He is their main guy. They got a couple other guys, but he is the guy St. Paul is going to want to get the ball in, ball into in those tough situations, get those touchdowns. So I think these are the two guys that we're going to kind of point out, put the spotlight on them. Connor Morris, Will Stiber, whichever one of these playmakers can do the most here tonight could end up on the victorious side. And we had an opportunity to go down on the field and talk to John Livengood. Let's throw it down to Travis Berardi, who's got the head coach, the longtime legend for the Flyers. Coach, you have the 11th ranked running back in the area, rushing right now. Uh, what do you guys need to do your offensive line in the trenches just to get his running game going tonight? Well, we've got to control uh, Crestview's defensive line. They're very aggressive. Uh, they move around quite a bit with their stunt package out of the 3-3. Three, three. So we've got to be able to control that. And, and uh, you know, the, the, the uh, you know Morse back in the backfield, you know, in the secondary, he's he's a force too. He, get, he comes up and fills the run pretty good. So we've got to, we've got to make sure we control line of scrimmage and account for him. And then defensively, Crestview, they're a more balanced, high-powered attack this year. What do you guys need to do to keep them off the board? Again, it's we've got to control the line of scrimmage. You know, I think everything starts up front, and they got a great offensive line. they got a great backfield and got a nice passing game. So, you know, they're very balanced, but, we, you know, everything starts up front. You've got to control the line of scrimmage. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, Coach has been running this program for over 30 years now, G-Man, and obviously he's – Done a lot of winning throughout his time here with St. Paul. So it's a good guy to have running your program, and he always has his guys prepared. As you know, a former Cougar player going head-to-head -head with the St. Paul team, never an easy task. Yeah, it's a different week when St. Paul, especially coming to your house, you want to beat these guys because uh, Coach John Livingood, a legend here in the area, 31st year as a head coach. He Ooh. hasn't even eclipsed 80 losses yet. So wow. Coach is a definite legend. I mean, he's got multiple Firelands Conference champ championships. I mean, you can't even count that on any fingers. I mean, that is ridiculous. This guy is a legend in this area, and what a great coach for St. Paul to have. And here come the Cougars trotting out onto the field. It is senior night as well. It's awesome to always run through that paper, especially on senior night. And how could you not want a better game than this? Two undefeated on your senior night. You want to walk out here with a W. They're pumped up, man, and they're looking forward to getting the uh, Firelands Conference win and obviously beating St. Paul for the first time in a while. Travis now down on the field, and he's got the head coach of the Cougars, Steve Haverdill, standing by. Coach, game day's finally here. It seems like it took forever to get here starting at the beginning of the week, but uh, a lot to offer in this game, a lot to play for. Just uh, how have you guys been able to just uh, check your emotions and just make this a regular game for you guys? We just treat it like it's been all year. It's just uh, next game on our schedule. It's the most important one, and uh, we've kept the routine the same, and uh, we're just ready to play football. Uh, St. Paul, the bread and butter is running the football. What are you guys in the trenches going to have to do to stop that? We got to win the trenches. We got to make sure we're getting off blocks. We got to make sure we're tackling and reading our keys. If we're able to do that, then uh, we'll put ourselves in a good position to stop the run. And then we got to make sure we're not falling asleep in the secondary because they'll try and go over top. All right, coach, good luck tonight. Thanks. You know, what a huge step that this program has taken under Haverdill now in his third season, G-Man. You know, a year ago, they had those four All-Ohioans. We've talked about that quite a bit. And the successful season that they had getting into the second round of the playoffs, they've even upgraded from that season to this one. What about Coach and his philosophy and his process do you think has worked taking these guys to the next level? I think the biggest thing for Coach Haverdale is he's, he's not going to sugarcoat anything. He's going to tell you exactly how it is. It's just the kind of guy he is. And whether you're doing the job wrong or doing it right, he's going to praise you when you're wrong and – or, uh, excuse me, praise you when you're right. But so far, Coach Haverdale, he really has turned this program around. We've had a few bad years the past uh, couple of seasons, and he's turned it around, and he's been dominant. And I talked to him about earlier in the week if this was the biggest game of his career, and he said, well, technically, yeah, because it's the next game on the schedule. So I guess uh, it doesn't matter who's playing. I think this week, obviously, it's his biggest game of his career playing St. Paul. And here are the Flyers coming out onto the field to wrap up our Simonson Construction pregame. Big shout out to them for sponsoring tonight's contest. Appreciate each and every one of our sponsors for helping us bring you live and free coverage of high school football. Also want to give a bit of love to uh, Kissel's Lawn Care Spraying and Painting. Also do a little bit of snow plow removal. 
and Scout Construction LLC. Love each and every one of our sponsors. Cougars are teeing it up. They're going to kick it away deep, so St. Paul will have their offense out on the field first. Boy, just getting a little bit nervous now, yeah. G-Man. We've been talking about this game for a couple of weeks now. Well, really about nine weeks, I think. And it's finally here, man. It has arrived. Yeah, it's going to be a definite great game here tonight. I think this big drive is a big tone setter, too. Which offense is going to come out first to get the first drive and first touchdown on the first possession? Initially, it looked like there was going to be a big crease to open up, but the Crestview special teams does their thing, shuts it down. St. Paul's been running that same offense ever since Live and Good was here. That tight formation, leave it to wing T, get it to the back, use some misdirection in the backfield, and they've been doing it for a very long time. And the, really the story for St. Paul is they don't use a lot of big guys up front. They're a little bit smaller guys, but they're quicker off the ball, and that's what makes them a little bit different and a little bit more tough to face. So Fisher under center, turns hands off. This is Quincy Krabs getting gang tackle as the ball comes loose. Referee comes in and says that he was down after about a one-yard gain on the play. See if he gets down here, Brian, on this tackle. Staying up in defenders. Ooh, that's out. That ball's definitely out. That is 100% a fumble. Yikes. <laughs> Unless the referee said that it was already forward right. progress, but right. it definitely didn't look like it. Yeah, and that is exactly what you want to do defensively. Get get to get to the uh, running back, hold him up, and have some other guys come in and try to strip that one away. It looks like that could have been a missed call unless the fourth progress was awarded. Fisher hands off now. Second down. Josh Pocos takes it right side. And, again, the Cougars' defense, we've seen them throughout the season. That D-line improve week to week to week. They have been dominant here of late. Yeah, they got some dudes up front, and the leading tackler on the team is Connor Morse. Of course, but they, they got some dudes up front, as I mentioned. Owen Barker is one of the leading guys on that defensive line. He's got 12 sacks, uh, 12 tackles for loss. He's been getting it done all season long, and he's got 57 total tackles at defensive end. Big third down here. Flyers keep it on the ground straight ahead. They're going to be two yards shy, so fourth down on the way. It'll be a decision time for Coach Livengood and company. See if they want to roll the dice, keep the offense out there. With the kind of push they usually get up front, I'd be surprised if he does send the pounding team out. So far, St. Paul is definitely getting a push up front. They push a few of the Krusty linemen back a couple yards, so they got to tighten up if they want to slow down this run game. Everybody in the box as they run it straight ahead, and the Cougars stop them absolutely going nowhere. Big play, Sean Bailey broke into the backfield first. He got some help down low. Crestview with the first big play of the night. Great penetration right there from Sean Bailey in the Crestview Cougars defensive line. They sent the house and got rewarded right there for the tackle for Lawson. Now Crestview in plus territory gets to open up their offensive possession. Can't ask for much better field position than what Hayden Kuhn has right now. And the junior signal caller will start the game under center. Morris the lone back. And they'll hand it to him, left side, blocks forming in front of him. And Connor's got eight yards on first down. And the one thing I love about his running style, even though he's only about five foot nine, maybe only a buck 65 or so, he's always going forward, G-Man, always falling for extra yardage. Now he's always trying to get the extra inch. And the offensive line right there, man, just carving up the St. Paul defense. Incredible lane for Connor Morris just to run right behind his blockers and get an easy, you know, eight-yard play. One wide receiver set here on second down as they'll keep it on the ground, and the Cougars got themselves a first down. And Wade Bolin really, really has been a pleasant surprise for the Cougars. He's their second leading rusher with 413 yards and three touchdowns. That's 6.7 yards a carry. And don't forget, this is a fullback. You're used to seeing just the tough yards, but he can break away, and he's got breakaway speed. Just a sophomore, too, so he's got plenty of room to grow. Cougars knocking on the door of the red zone. Morris trying to follow his lead blocks. Not a ton of space as he does get inside of the 20. Second down. Seven yards needed here for the Cougars. Move the chains. 
See when Crestview elects to throw the ball. I believe Coach Averdo likes his talent outside, thinks they can win those one-on-one -on -one matchups, and with St. Paul usually stacking the box, it will be typically one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. That's what they've got with Addison Raymer. Instead, they'll keep it on the ground again. Straight ahead. That's about three more yards for Connor. We talked about that mental aspect in pregame, and I think getting that stop on fourth down really relieves some of that you know, on the mental game. And now Crestview, they can they run their offense. The jitters are out of them. It's time to go play ball. That's a good point. When you come out here on the road, had the Flyers pick that up, right. maybe some of those mental notes come in like, oh, oh boy, up. here we go again. Instead, a big stop for the Cougars and looking to get some points. Here's Morris. Makes a cut. And he's hit right at where he needed to get to move the sticks. I think he's going to be about a half yard shy, so now it's going to be decision time for Coach Haverdill. Man, what a block right there from Wade Bowling. I was watching him the whole entire play, and he absolutely pancakes the defender right here. He needs some syrup. Go down and get some right here. You just see 13 right up to the hole. Oh, you right. 54 straight to the ground. Incredible play from the Crestview offensive line and Wade Bowling. Fourth down, less than a yard. Two back set. It's going to be Bowling. To the left side, he got upended, but I think he was able to fall forward and get just enough. So both teams going up, going forward on fourth down on their first possession, and Cressy's going to be able to get this one. Big momentum for the Cougars as they're looking to punch this one in. All runs so far on this drive for Crestview. Can still pick up a first down at the one-yard line. Pro set here for Kuhn. Raymer, the lone receiver to the left. And it's going to be Morris looking to cut back inside. He'll spin his way and then knocked down just shy of the goal line. Incredible cut right there for Connor Morris. A one cut back, put his foot in the ground, cut up the field, and absolutely made the defender's ankles come out of his body. He left his skates, I believe, the four-yard line right here. So he just makes him Whoop. drop to the ground. Incredible cut Whoop. there from Morris and wasn't able to get in, but heck of a play for Morris. Such an elusive runner. Done a great job in short yardage situations all year, too, on the goal line. Here he is straight ahead, and I think he's going to be in there. No signal yet from the officials, though. They're going to say he's actually stopped shy. So St. Paul's going to try to bring all they can to keep Crestview out of the end zone. you got to get some points here if you're Crestview. Second down, obviously plenty of opportunity to do so. They're about six inches shy of getting a touchdown here as Kuhn brings in the call from the sideline. Morris, the deep back, bowling in front of him. And they'll give it to Morris, and he's in there this time, right in front of the student section. Touchdown, Crestview. Great drive from the Cougars right there, making a statement, coming out defensively, getting a fourth down stop and then taking it right down the field and really wasn't stopped the whole entire time until that fourth down, got it into the end zone, did Connor Morris. I believe that is, that is his 24th touchdown, Brian. He is approaching the career record mark here for the Cougars. One more look at it on the scout construction replay. That's just beautiful blocking. Connor does a great job of recognizing the hole and getting where there's space. So far, the biggest impact I think might be Wade Bolin leading up the hole, man. As soon as he follows Wade Bolin, He's typically getting a big amount of yards, and right there got the touchdown following his fullback. Those guys typically don't get a ton of love, but in this offense, more of a pro style. You see Bowen lean the way again, setting the edge as he put a nice block on Eli Fisher. So Crestview strikes first, and wow, what a monkey off their back that must be to get off to a nice start here. Yeah, now the jitter should be gone. Now let's just go play football. We schemed up all week. We studied their tape. We know how what they want to do. There's no, there's no more mental aspect here. You're already up 7 nothing. All you got to do is hold them out and you win the game. Obviously not not what the Flyers are thinking, but th that's the optimal you know, think of Coach Averno. We stop them, we win the game. But the jitters are off. Let's see if Crestview can continue to do so defensively, force another turnover, get the ball back, and see if they can get some points. And how about the Crestview moving company, as I think you have appropriately nicknamed the boys up front. All runs on that drive, Garrett, so they didn't even try a play action or to try to get Kuhn out on the edge, as we've seen so often during the season. They kept it simple. They gave it to their two stud running backs, and that was enough to get into the end zone. 
might have wanted to make a statement. You know, we can run just like St. Paul usually does, just right down your throats. And they did all the way down to the end zone. Connor Morris following his blockers and getting the big t TD to give Crestview the early 7 nothing advantage. The return taken from about the 8-yard line. It's going to be Ben Berger. And he's going to be stacked up. Lots of toppings on top of that burger right there at the 24-yard line. So St. Paul comes out for their second offensive possession. Didn't pick up a first down. If you'll remember it on the previous drive, went forward on a fourth and short. The Crestview defense was successful and was able to capitalize on the short field. Flyers keep it on the ground here. First down. And that's our first look at Will Steber. And what makes St. Paul so hard to defend, as soon as they break the huddle, they sprint to the line of scrimmage, and they don't let you get set defensively. They don't let you, don't let you recognize the formation and shift accordingly. As soon as they snap the huddle, they're on the line of scrimmage and hiking the ball. It's pretty impressive to do so. Fisher turns hands off. This time it's going to be Pocos. And Crestview knocks him down after about a half-yard gain, so it's going to be third down, two needed to keep the drive alive. And Pacos is one of those running backs, the three-headed monster. Will Steber, the leading rusher with 840 yards. Quincy Krabs has 581 yards. And then Josh Pocos with 384. So they get it done with all three of their running backs. Definitely don't have to throw it a lot with all the rushing that they've been able to put together over the season, over 2,000 yards collectively through seven games. Left side this time right into the teeth of the D. He's going to be short, and it's going to be the exact same situation that we saw on the previous drive. Fourth down and just about a, a full yard here. Looks like the Flyers are going to bring on the punt team. I think it might be the right decision here, but it is. I mean, it's, 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 it's such a tough job being a head coach because right now you want to get that first down and stop some of the momentum, and they are going to bring out the punt team and punt this way to the Cougars. At least the punter is on there. Tyler Perkins, who I'm told is one of the best punters in the Buckeye State. Indeed. <laughs> Fair catch called for and made at the 24-yard line. And here comes the Crestview offense after the D. Making a statement, back-to-back -back drives. No first downs allowed to St. Paul. I believe Crestview's defense has only allowed... 97 points all year long, 672 yards rushing, and 668 yards passing. Wow. So just over 1,000 yards total for this Crestview defense. They have really been the center block to the, some of their uh, success in this undefeated season. Twins to the left side of Kuhn, who hands it off up the middle. Churning his way for about a yard was Morris. Tremendous move right there from the defensive lineman. Swiping away the offensive lineman, getting into the backfield and getting a stop. I believe only a gain of two on that one for the Cougars. Who break the huddle with just one receiver. It's going to be Gabe Smedley split out here to the near side. Looks like he's got single coverage. And Kuhn looking that way as they move the pocket. He's got his favorite target. And out across the 40 to the 42 goes Smedley. Tremendous route right there from Gabe Smedley. I think St. Paul was in zone right there, broke it off and just sat in the zone, and Hayden Kuhn hit him with a beautiful pass. There was a defender almost about to get there, but heads up play from Kuhn. He put it right on the money and gave Gabe Smedley an opportunity to get some yak. There is the starters for tonight offensively for the Cougars. We're going to keep it in the hands of Morris here on first down. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage and nothing more. Second and long, Raymer split out wide here to the near side. Smedley up top. And Kuhn from the gun for the first time. Straight ahead with Morris. 
tripped up. And third down, five yards is what the Cougars are looking at here. And that's a nice play call right there from Coach Keener and the offensive staff. Getting him in shotgun, so it looks like he might pass the ball. St. Paul, you know, combats that, puts two safety high. So Addison Raymer and Gabe Smelly aren't on an island out there. But then they run the ball right up the gut, so the box not loaded. Tremendous play call. Four down linemen here for St. Paul. They'll just bring those four. And another nice throw on the run. I believe it's Addison Raymer with the catch. And he's got the first down, breaking into flyer territory. Tremendous pass right there from Coon. And they like to roll him out, get him off his spot. Two rollout passes here to the right. And he's hit right on the money right there to Addison Raymer. They're deep that receiver. I believe he is only, he is over 20 uh, yards at completion. So incredible stretch of the field Addison Raymer is, as well as Gabe Smedley. Got to give some love to Hayden Kuhn as well. 71% of his passes have been completed so far this year. A big part of that is because the run game has been so effective. They use the play action so successfully week in, week out. But it, it's pretty nice when uh, you're picking up six, seven yards just about every time you hand it off to a back. It's a tough offense to stop because you want to load the box and stop Connor Morris and the Crestview offensive line. But then you leave out, leave those wide receivers on one-on-one uh, -on -one coverage, and then you let Hayden Kuhn really pick you apart. So it's it, it's not a, it's not an easy task to come in here and stop a Crestview offense that's on fire. It's Morris again from the gun. Another first down. Crestview offense back on the move. And the offensive line is driving the St. Paul D lineman three or four yards down the field. Look at this play right here. Where's there's no St. Paul D lineman in the picture right there, and Connor just gets an easy five to six yards on that carry. It was Zach Pocos who eventually made the tackle from down low. Kuhn hands off again. Morris makes a cut. And Quincy Krabs potentially made a touchdown saving tackle there. Looked like Morris was just going to burst through like he was shot out of a cannon and then got drugged down. I was just about to mention that. Morris is so explosive. As soon as he finds the hole, one cut up the field, looking for Pater. Just a shoestring tackle, man. He might have been off to the races for six, but nice tackle from St. Paul and hold on to get him down to the ground. Second down and four, Morris to the right side this time, lowers his shoulder, and he's inside the 20. Another first down, and the Cougars back in the red zone. Cressy on the move here, and it's been a combination of the run game and passing game. Pulling Aiden Agassi over there, blocks out the defensive end, and then Connor Morris runs right off of him for a first down. Looks like it's going to be a third down, Brian. Third and one, maybe? Third and short. And that will take us, well, what are they, are they going to measure it? I, I thought that maybe he, he got kind of jobbed on the spot. It looked to me like Connor fell forward about a full yard beyond where the mark is. And so the chain gang will come out. So it's either going to be third and one or a Cougar first down. And just a few inches shy of having the chain gang move. So it will bring up third down, but the way that Crestview's been running the football, you imagine they're just going to stick to the script here. Yeah, no reason to get cute here. Just run the ball, get the first down, and set up another opportunity for your offense. I don't know. Here, there is an opportunity here for maybe a play action pass. Take a shot at the end zone because you can really go for it on fourth down. Flyer stack in the box. Bullen gets bowled backwards. Hit down low and then cracked upstairs. First contact made there by Will Steber. Looks like they are going to give him the first down, Brian. Give him the forward progress before he got knocked back. So first down for the Cougars. And that's going to take us to the end of a very fast-moving first quarter. And what a performance by the Crestview Cougars. 7-0 lead and looking for more when we come back.
Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Welcome back to your Saturday showcase, undefeated versus undefeated. Norwalk, St. Paul, and Crestview playing for the Firelands Conference Championship here tonight. Brian Skronsky, Garrett Parlett with you on the call. First down for Crestview. They've got a 7-0 lead, and they've got Hayden Kuhn moving the pocket, throwing on the run. Gabe Smedley with the catch and reaching inside of the two-yard line. So the good times just keep on rolling here for Crestview, looking good. Crestview making it look easy, too, as you see. They've got 96 total yards. They just eclipsed that. Going to be over 100 now. Tremendous route from Gabe Smelly. Breaks it off at the top. He's an incredible route runner. Hayden Kuhn puts it right in between the numbers and Cougars. Looking sharp here, man, early. They're making it look pretty efficient. Such a great connection Kuhn and Smedley have. And how about Morris in the end zone? They're kind of two of the same. Go hand in hand so far this season. And he's back in there second time tonight. And Brian, he might as well just set up a tent in there, you know, go to sleep at the end zone because he is typically always in the end zone for the Cougars. I believe that is his 25th touchdown on the year. Connor Morris, man, getting it done. Got him down there with the running game and the passing game. A very well-balanced attack on that drive to make it 13 to nothing pending the PAT. They've got Devin Holloway lined up to kick it. Kuhn with the hold, it's down, it's solid, and it's through. So 14-0 Crestview. And we've been talking for a few weeks, Garrett, about could this be Crestview's year? We all felt like they had the talent to get it done, but would they you know, go, go hide when, when they see St. Paul coming out onto the field? So far, they've certainly answered that they've been up for the challenge and uh checking off all the boxes here yeah i think they've done the exact opposite of high than we all thought they were going to do they've came out here and they've really took it to st paul we're usually used to seeing st paul take it to them but this year different year so far but if you're crusty you can't fall asleep up 14 nothing it doesn't matter continue to keep the foot on the gas because st paul still a very great team they're going to be in this game for the majority of the game st or uh, crestview cannot fall asleep st paul a very good offensive team you covered this matchup last year up in Norwalk, and it was a tight game early. Crestview, I believe, was down 14-10, something yep. like that around this time of the game. And then all of a sudden, the Flyers took over. They scored a bunch of unanswered points, 48-10. Captain Krabs, who, if you're a Crestview fan, you're glad that you saw him graduate. <laughs> he had five touchdowns. Maybe flipping the script here tonight with Connor Morris. And what's so special about the Flyers is they typically control the time of possession, so their best defense is keeping the opposing offense off the field, and that is what they're going to need to do tonight. They need to keep the offense for Crestview off the field. Hayden Kuhn and company need to stay off the field for St. Paul to get a big win here. With the kick flying out of bounds, it's going to be up to St. Paul if they want to start with the field position or back up Crestview and make them re-kick it. And it looks like they're just going to start at the 35-yard line. So third drive about to be started here for the Flyers. No first downs, 16 total yards so far, G. It's really been that dominant Crestview defensive front, getting some penetration and getting some tackle for loss. This is a big drive for St. Paul to come and grab some momentum. Going to come out with a little bit different look here as two flags fly pre-snap. And it's going to be an illegal shift against St. Paul and that's pretty uncharacteristic of them. You don't typically see the Flyers hurt themselves. No, they typically stay ahead of the chains, but right there, that is not going to help their case. A predominantly running team don't want to stay behind the chains. want to stay in front and get those easy second and short, second or third and short opportunities. One other thing to note, 
St. Paul, they're typically a really fast starting team. Their best scoring quarter yep. on the season, the first, where they just got blanked. Through the first seven weeks, they had outscored their foes by 50 points in the first quarter. So definitely something changing here tonight. And we've got a flag coming in late here after the play. It's going to be a personal foul. Just not sure if it's going to go against St. Paul or Crestview. Yeah, this one's going to go against Crestview. I believe that was Sean Bailey just was in a little bit of a, scr little bit of a scrum with a St. Paul player. Kind of pulled out and ripped his face mat. Going to be unsportsmanlike conduct. So Crestview shoots themselves a little bit here as the Flyers are going to march all the way into Cougar territory to the 43-yard line. That's a big penalty, 15 yards. Yeah, that's something you, you, you can't afford, especially of a big game like this. Huge miscue for Sean Bailey and the Crestview Cougars. Let's see if they can respond and see if they can stop St. Paul. Fisher turns, hands off. Cyber to the outside. And more extracurriculars. Raymer getting caught up at the end of the play, but no, no flag thrown this time. Looks like St. Paul might have went to the sidelines and got a, got a little screaming match from the coaches. You know, we're, we're being a little soft, play a little bit more physical. And, man, they're bringing it right here. You see multiple double teams. I mean, they're driving guys wow. 10, 15 yards down the field. This St. Paul offensive front is finally starting to get themselves, you know, going. Big hole here to the right side on the second and seven. It's going to be the second first down of the night for St. Paul on the move now out to the 27-yard line. And I really don't think St. Paul has changed up anything that they were doing from the first quarter. They're just playing a little bit more physical. They're getting the, the bodies moved up on the defensive line, and they're getting up to backer, forcing the running back to bounce it outside right here. Nice block right there. Follows his blockers. And look at the quarterback, man, Eli Fisher up there re leading through the hole and big gain for St. Paul and the Flyers. In this offense, the quarterback will get out and be a lead blocker from time to time. And Fisher again. Gives it to Stiber up the middle. And another great push by the offensive front as he falls forward almost nine yards on the game. Yeah, it looked like there was nothing there, Brian, and then the pile just continue to keep getting pushed. And big game right there from St. Paul. And nice run from Josh Pocos. They toss it this time. Will trying to hit the edge. And he's going to be driven backwards. So Steber gets him into the red zone. Real close to first down yardage. It will be third down and short, though, coming up for St. Paul. Nice job from the Crestview defense to string that out and let the athletes get him out to the outside. That was Kading Cunningham out there to make the tackle. It's going to bring up a big third down for the Flyers. St. Paul trying to answer with the scoring drive after Crestview just went two for two on each of their possessions. Timeout taken by the Flyers. What do you make of this start, Garrett? Crestview coming out here on this beautiful new service. They just had a ribbon cutting. They played here last week, but some more festivities here tonight as they had senior night. You know, a lot of football players, well, every athlete and cheerleader that is involved with Crestview Sports was honored. So, you know, I, I think that there was a, a lot of fun, good vibes here in the building. What, what do you think about how Crestview's come out here? Well, this is exactly what they wanted to do. Come out, get a big start, and get a big couple of touchdowns on the board. Up 14 nothing, But I, I don't think you can, you know, ha hang up on that. I mean, they're, they're starting to drive now. The St. Paul Flyers are starting to wake up. Crestview, got to put the retaliation back, get some stops here if they want to continue their success up here 14 nothing in the second quarter. Good look at Coach Haverdell, now in his third season. Just progressively taking the program from one level to the next to the next. And a lot of young guys here on this team too, so no indication that it's going to slow down anytime soon. Full backfield and somebody move for St. Paul. That's going to be a big penalty. What was third and about a half a yard, now it's going to be closer to six. So St. Paul here on this drive alone. Two flags shoot themselves in the foot. So now a big third and six helps out the Cougars defensively. Let's see if they can get a stop.
from the gun. Wildcat look. And Steber, huge hold to the outside. Lowers the boom. He dropped the football, but it's going to roll out of bounds. Flag flies in late, I believe. No, it's just the, the bean bag. Uh, I, w I wish they didn't make those orange. Yeah, but incredible play right here, and it was really set up in the Quincy Crabs block on Gabe Smelly, who came down to try to make the tackle. Ooh. Man, St. Paul, though, catching a break right there with the ball falling out of bounds, with St. Paul now moving and in Crestview territory. First time inside the red zone tonight for the Flyers. Come out with the wing T formation. And they're going to run it left side. Quincy Krabs on the carry. He's got four. Another look here on the scout construction replay. He's one of these big running backs for St. Paul. A part of that trio that gets it done, all three above 300 rushing yards. And he's really been dominant all season long, and he's getting the two carries tonight as well. Over 600 yards on the season, seven touchdowns. And they keep it on the ground again here. It's, it's Steber this time. Be curious to see when maybe St. Paul, Crestview pressing a little bit defensively, blitzing, loading the box, see if they ever pop out, maybe do a play action and see if they can find a guy in the end zone. It's going to be third down and six. Right now the Flyers one of four on third down attempts. They'll keep it on the ground. Steber tried to rumble through. Stop short. Fourth down, maybe about a yard coming up. Tough running right there from Will Steber. Got hit in the hole but didn't stop his feet. Continued to churn those legs and took a few crusty defenders with him. But it is going to bring up a fourth down and a big play here for both sides of the ball. We saw Crestview win this battle last time that they rolled the dice on a fourth down. Different looking set this go around. Three receivers. How about Fisher getting away from the pressure, looking towards the end zone. Bolin's going to throw him out of bounds. Wild play. The ball came loose. Crestview has it. What a play from the Crestview defense. Eli Fisher trying to do a little bit too much, but there is going to be a flag on the play, Brian. Thinking maybe a horse collar <laughs> on the Cougars. Okay, the ball came loose there in that open field. We do have a flag. That was a bizarre look and play. Intentional, Intentional grounding, though, so Crestview not interested in that penalty. They're going to take over. We got to see this thing again. Yeah, this is a crazy play. Eli Fisher looking left, not going to get there. Briar Gotti was there to make the tackle, but couldn't get it, but continue to pursue the play. And Wade Bullen is going to get to Fisher. Fisher trying to do too much. Just throws it up for grabs, and Briar was there to grab it. So Crestview now, three defensive stands so far, up 14-0, looking to make this one 21-zip. Hayden Kuhn drops the snap initially. Quick reflexes, though, scoops it up, takes it forward out across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Actually gained two yards on the play. Yeah, they typically tell the offensive lineman if there is a fumble, dive on it, but not for skill guys. If you got that kind of athleticism, pick it up and see how far you can go. Got two yards on that play, but a big time play from Kuhn and the recognition just to grab it and get a few yards. Hayden under center, two backs behind him. It's going to be Morris with the give. Made a nice cut. Took a shot, and he's going to be about three yards shy here. Third down on the way for this Crestview offense. More so good at just following his blockers and then finding the hole and making the cut. Bring out Noah Stewart on the pull. He gets a nice block and follows him right up the hole for a good game. Loaded backfield here. They give it to Morris. Shifting his way around the defense. Down the sideline. Got one man to beat and he'll get by him. Connor Morris. Unbelievable stuff. Wow, man. What a play right there from Connor Morris. 
making the defender look silly. Incredible play. There was nothing there inside. Decided to bounce it outside and got a huge gain to set up the Cougars on the St. Paul side of the field as you see it. Just puts his foot in the ground and leaves number five. Skates Ooh. on the 25-yard line. Just looking like a cat running through an alley with a bunch of dogs chasing him down. Finally brought down. Could be a play of the game nominee right there. They give it to Bowen this time, the lead back. He's going to be driven down after a gain of about six. That's his season average. And that's what makes Crestview so deadly. Even when they don't give it to Morris and they hand it off to the fullback, they can get chunk yardage in the run game. Yeah, you don't expect that out of your fullback to be able to get up in the holes. And for a fullback to have that kind of speed, the defense has to be aware of that. They don't want to just load the box because he's got breakaway speed if he needs to. He can bounce it out to the outside. Wade Bolin, one of the unsung heroes for this Crestview offense. They split Raymer out wide. They'll hand it off Morris, left side, showing a nice burst. He's got the acceleration for another first down. Connor a little slow to get up there. Got hit by a couple of defenders. But man, is this kid tough. It seems like just about every time I watch him in person, he'll get shaken up a little bit because they use him so often, so frequently. He's one of the best tacklers on the team, the best actually. Yeah. So he definitely gets gets his uh, usage. Want to say what's up to our viewers? Taking it in from Texas and Georgia. I imagine they're enjoying a little bit more sunshine than we have here today. I think fall has officially finally set in. So actually, howdy, I guess, is the way to say hello to you folks out there in Big Tex. Sometimes down in the red zone, they really like that play action game when they split uh, Gabe Smedley up top here. Keep an eye on him. Said it's going to be Morris churning out a few more yards across the 10. So third down two on the way for Crestview. Wonder if Crestview almost wishes they could have run the clock out a little bit more before they punch this one in and really get a, a, a two touchdown big swing. If they, they, get, they do get the ball in the third quarter, but nonetheless, big time run from Connor Morse all the way down into St. Paul territory. And they're looking to punch this one in and make it a three score game. Morris, big hole opened up by Bolin. Great tackle made there. It looked like he was gonna just scoot in for the touchdown, but Fisher able to wrap him up down low by the ankles. I didn't see a St. Paul defender, Brian, in sight on that run. Absolute max size truck hole, Brian. I could have ran through that, maybe me and Storm at the same time. I don't know, though. That is pushing it, but big time hole from the Crestview offensive line, and they are dominating the St. Paul front. Under four minutes to go. Two back set, Morris. And for the first time tonight, brought down basically in the backfield, Ben Berger made a nice read. See the burst to get in here, disrupt it before it has a chance to develop. It looks like Crestview is cutting the nose guard. As soon as the ball is hiked, chop his legs down and then run right off of him. But right there, big time play from the St. Paul defenders and get Connor Morris for a tackle for loss. Second down and goal. Pro set, play action. Kuhn flushed and he throws end zone a diving Smedley. Can't get his sticky fingers on it. It'll bring up third down. St. Paul now put the pressure on the Cougars. Going to bring up a big third down. Looks like we're going to get an official's timeout for an injured player. And that might be Hayden Kuhn. Does look like Kuhn is taking his time. Took a shot there at the end of that play. Looks like he is going to be all right, able to walk off under his own power. Hayden Kuhn having such an amazing first year as a starting quarterback. 
1,100 yards through the air, 13 touchdowns, and what you like most as a coach, just one interception all season. So how would it feel to be Tyson Ringler right now? Going to have to step in for at least one play as Hayden Kuhn has to leave the field. And this is a big play, third down two. St. Paul looking to get a stop and keep this a two-score advantage. So Tyson Ringler is going to be in the freshman. What a spot against St. Yeah. Paul. He'll just give it to Morris. Stacked up. Kept the feet moving. Flag comes in very late. The early indication is that he was stopped short. So it'll be fourth down pending this penalty. Yeah, actually, it's going to go against St. Paul, and boy, that's a big one right there. It's a big break. Now, St. or excuse me, now Crest, you can bring back out Hayden Kuhn. Got a whole new set of downs to try to punch this one in the end zone. And you had talked about leaving the time on the clock. Under three minutes to go here. Crestview potentially can milk off a little bit more, though it looks like the penalty actually didn't give him a first down. So it is still, still going to be fourth down. Play clock's down to zero. Crestview's going to take their first time out of the game. Kuhn will be able to check back into the lineup. Big time play coming up here from both sides. St. Paul desperately needs a stop. Don't want to go down 21 nothing here before the end of the second quarter. They're going to get a shot regardless to get some points on the board. But if they do stop him here, they got a long drive to make this a one-score game. Take a quick second to thank all of our generous sponsors, including Simonson Construction Services. Do such a great job here in the greater Ashland area. Also, Kissel's Landscaping, Spraying and Painting. Do a little bit of snow removal, too. Hit up Dave. Find him on Facebook to schedule some service. Also want to thank Sutton Bank for sponsoring tonight cont tonight's contest. And then Scout Construction LLC, who is hiring, looking for carpenters right now. Contact Josh Mobley if you're interested. So here we go, fourth down, big play coming up. And they're just going to toss it. Student body left for Morris, who gets upended, and I think the second contact is going to keep him out of the end zone. Boy, it certainly looked like he was going to barrel his way through, and instead... Gets knocked down just inches shy. What a play right there. I believe that was Zach. Pacos right there. Heck of an effort for Morris, but huge play for St. Paul. And boom, stopped him right at the one-yard line. That is a big play for St. Paul. Gets some momentum and obviously the ball back too. Krabs hit him down low. Looked like he was going to upend Connor into the end zone, but instead that second contact keeps him out. But now St. Paul under the shadow of their own goal post. Gets a little bit of breathing room. Three-yard pickup on first down. And how aggressive do you really want to get if you're St. Paul here? You did move the ball on your previous possession. St. Paul, not the passing team. Typically loves to run the ball. Not sure if that's going to change here with 159 remaining. They might just try to wind this clock out. Go into halftime, down 14 nothing. Fisher shifts a man behind him, takes a snap with eight on the play clock. Will Steber straight ahead out across the five-yard line. And surprisingly, Coach Abner not going to use any timeouts here, try to stop the clock and get the ball back for his offense. Looks like he might be you know, content just running this one out. 
and going into the locker rooms up 14. Want to invite everybody to stick around for the Simonson Construction Halftime. Both bands will put on some big time performances for you guys. So the action will continue at the end of the second. And big throw down the middle just through the hands of Ben Berger. That ball was put basically right on the money. And it'll be fourth down. And Crestview offense going to get another opportunity here. Curious call right there. I'm surprised he didn't just want to run the ball out. I think Coach Averter was really letting him just run it out and go into halftime, but took a shot. Eli Fisher, I mean, that was a beautiful ball. A BB on a rope, but Ben Berger couldn't collect it. He might have got away for six there, Brian, if he could pull that one down and get away from the defender. That's a tough catch if you're a receiver going up and over your shoulder like that. Kind of a blind catch, the angle of where that football was coming down at. And so now Tyler Perkins going to come out. He's got a big booming leg. He'll send this one to Raymer, and he'll take it on the hop at his own 45. Raymer cuts back, and five guys in white jerseys waiting for him. So right about midfield is where Hayden Kuhn in the offense will come out with a chance to try to add to this lead. I believe Crestview still, still holds two timeouts, so plenty of time here to operate, especially with the quarterback you got under center and the wideouts on the outside, at least be able to get a shot at a field goal. Crestview does have a quality kicker, Devin Holloway. Haven't seen him in a for sure passing down situation yet here tonight. Kuhn lobs it out here, and it's going to be Tanner Moore with the catch, his first of the night. Picks up four. Good job right there from St. Paul to rally to the ball. Don't want to get Tanner Moore out in space. He is a speedster, and he will outrun the whole entire secondary if he gets the opportunity. Kuhn takes it with 35 seconds, stepping up in the pocket. Now he spins his way through some trouble, reaches forward for a pickup of one timeout taken. Team timeout number two by the Cougars. And that's an ability that Hayden Kuhn has. I've seen him many times throughout the season. He just, you know, he contorts his body. He gets low. Typically, he can put a hand on the ground and keep his balance. He's a really dynamic athlete once he breaks out of the pocket. Yeah, he's a tremendous offensive player, especially at the quarterback position. But rushing, he also can get it done. He's got 32 rushes for 138 yards, and most of those are off of the scramble, Drew Bryan, not usually a typical design for him, but the receivers are covered downfield. He'll escape, not there right. St. Paul got to him and was able to get the sack, or I believe maybe a one-yard gain for Kuhn. Cougars will need five yards to pick up a first down, and of course at the high school level it stops the clock, so it would be big. So you can go to the middle of the football field with just 29 seconds here. I think Coach Havardo might be trying to get to the 30-yard line. Believe that is Holloway's range. Get to the 30-yard line. See if he can get a, at least a shot at a field goal to make this a 17-point game. Flyers show blitz. They drop back in coverage. Kuhn lobs it. Smedley with a catch. He's got the run, turning it upfield. Drop down at the 20-yard line. Pick up of 25 on the game. Smedley has been cooking these DBs all night long, and right there he did it again as Chris was in business. Kuhn takes it and spikes it. 19 seconds still showing. Nice poise in the pocket, but just a great catch by Smedley. Coming back to the football, getting it where he needed to, and you see the burst of speed and energy that he displays after making the catch. So the Cougars certainly at least within field goal range of feeling confident about an attempt. Can they move the pocket to the right side this time? Kuhn throwing on the run. He's got his man. Touchdown, Addison Raymer. 20-0 Cougars all over St. Paul. Just a typical corner out right there, a seven route, and Addison Raymer right there. Beautiful pass from Hayden Kuhn on the run right in between the numbers. And I don't know if Coach Livengood, it might come back to haunt him that decision to pass the ball on third down. Could have ran it out and probably went into the halftime down 14, but 
Now looks like he's going to go down 21 zip. Just a beautiful play design. They had Smedley on the out route underneath. Raymer going deep. Plenty of space there. Coon put it on the money where he needed to. And they cash in for six. Will it be seven? 21 nothing now. Crestview after the PAT is good from Holloway. That's going to be Raymer's fourth touchdown of the year. He is their big play guy. And what a big play that one was right there. Gets his 17th reception of the year. He's now going to be up to... 390 yards receiving, so Raymer showing off his athleticism and beautiful touch pass right there from Kuhn right on the money to make it easy for Raymer. Nice collection of talent that Crestview has at the wideout position, and you actually went toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys during the summer, <laughs> G-Man. What did you see from, like, the three, four top guys that they have, in particularly with Raymer and Smedley? Well, I can say this. I believe... The only two that I couldn't do anything against was Raymer and Smedley. Those guys were suffocating me defensively. I couldn't do anything, and offensively, they were mossing me. They're great players and great guys. They're having a tremendous impact here tonight and probably the biggest game of their career. It was actually a penalty that wiped out the made PAT, and Holloway going to be wide right, actually, on this attempt. So Crestview, the lead drops down to 20 to 0. But just one heck of an impressive first half performance. You know, you want to talk about the boogeyman. That has been it for Crestview for years and years and years. Ten years since they last beat St. Paul. And a lot of conversation just about what it means. The allure of the Flyers out on the field. And when you see St. Paul or Flyers on their jersey, what it does to you typically gets you shaking in your boots. Crestview has not had that mentality. It's been a different kind of season for them. I think collectively overall, they've been playing with a chip on your shoulder. You can almost see it out there, Garrett, the way that these guys play. They were not intimidated, and they're actually taking it to St. Paul right now. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing was that fourth down stop on the first drive of the game for St. Paul. Cressy really, I think that's what the one that got him off and got him going. And then they got the score on the next possession, got him in easy territory. But Cressy, a few years ago, Brian did lose off a of missed PAT. I don't want to bring up any oh, bad juju, buddy. but – they did lose that one 13-14, but Crestview out here 21 or 20 nothing, excuse me, over the Flyers big time here on Saturday night. Complimentary football for Crestview as well. The defense has made some big plays, opening things up for the offense who has come through. They've been down into the red zone every time they've touched the football. They got stopped at the two-inch line the one time. Other than that, Cougars, very successful night on both sides. And doing it in special teams too, as that's going nowhere. Minimal return from Ben Berger. Bryce Perkins down there to get Ben Berger for the tackle. Another one of those players, a young guy, sophomore, that's gonna come up probably next year and make a bigger impact, but incredible play here from Crestview so far. St. Paul. Probably going to run this one out, head into the locker room down 20 nothing. And the big thing is, Crestview gets it back to start the third quarter. See if St. Paul licks to just run a play here. They will near side. And that's going to be the final play of the opening half. A Josh Pocos run. And a standing ovation for the Crestview Cougars showing out here at home on senior night all over St. Paul. Make sure you keep it here. Halftime entertainment on the way on the Simonson Construction Halftime Show. Both bands will be out on the field. After that, we'll have some halftime stats and I believe even an interview lined up with head coach Steve Haverdale of the Cougars with Travis Berardi. So a lot still to come here after the break. You're watching live and free high school football exclusively on the OH Report. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel.
Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. Man, what should I listen to on the OH report today? Dude, listen to the Friday Night Pigskin. You got highlights and scores from all around the area. The OH Report podcast has more than just football. No, listen to the pigskin. The pigskin. Podcast. Pigskin. Pigskin. Podcast. Pigskin. Why podcast. not both? Pigskin. Podcast. Podcast. Dude, clean your ears out, man. Bro, there's so much space in here. Next, we have a number designed by Macy Hay and Atlanta Tackers. Here's one of Billy Joel's biggest hits, Uptown Girl. For our final two tonight, here's a song that Paul Simon found success with back in the 80s. The thrill was designed by Nate Catalano and the D, Joseph Mill. Here, you can call me Al.
That's our show for the night. We hope you enjoyed it. Have a pleasant evening, and go Flyers! and color guard directed by Neely Burkholder, we proudly present to you the 2021 Marching Cougar Pride! Tonight we present to you for your halftime entertainment our senior show, featuring songs selected by the MCP senior members from their favorite past shows. The Marching Cougar Pride opens their show with a song by the disco group KC and the Sunshine Band, which first appeared on their 1975 self-titled album. The song became a hit after it appeared on the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack in 1977. It was subsequently released as a single and peaked at number 35 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 29 on the Soul Chart in 1978. The marching drill for this song was written by MCP senior C.J. McFarland. So sit back and enjoy the band's performance of the disco hit, Boogie Shoes. Before our second number, we would like to recognize our senior band members and thank them for their hard work and dedication to the Marching Cougar Pride. First up, Color Guard member Alyssa Henthorn. Next, bass drum member Kevin Spears. Sousaphone member Colton Spears. Saxophone member C.J. McFarland. 
Baritone member, Owen Smith. <laughs> Snare drum member, Peyton Collins. Piccolo member, Haley Whitmore. Let's hear it for our senior members. All right, for our second number, the band brings to you a single by Stevie Wonder from his 1973 album, Inner Visions. More recently, this song has been featured in the 2016 movie, Sing, and is performed by Tori Kelly. Here is the MCP's performance of Don't You Worry About a Thing. We close the show with the single by Earth, Wind, and Fire, released in April 1979. The marching drill for this song was written by MCP senior Owen Smith. Give it up for the marching Cougar Pride as they play Boogie Wonderland.
The Marching Cougar Pride would like to congratulate the St. Paul Marching Band on a fine performance. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Coach, you couldn't have asked for a better start for you guys. First two drives, you score. You do get kept out of the end zone, but you get a quick touchdown before the half. Just uh, your thoughts on the first half and what you need to do to keep uh, keep it up in the second. No, it was a great first half. Uh, it was nice to get that other punched in, but that happens. Um, now we got to play another half football just like we did in order to get this win. And you know they're going to be coming at you. They did have a, a good drive there. You guys got the stop. But uh, what do you guys need to do defensively to keep that up? Just got to keep doing what we're doing. They're a very good football program. They can put points up really quick. So we got to stay on our toes and keep playing football. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Travis. Good stuff. And appreciate Coach for giving us some time. And, boy, he's got to be happy with what he saw in that first half of play, Crestview building a 20 to nothing advantage over their longtime rival and nemesis, Norwalk St. Paul. And as we're going to dive into the halftime stats here, you'll see that the Cougars got it done in all, all the phases, G-Man. I mean, they played well defensively, and then offensively, they were pretty darn good too. Absolute dominant performance here from the Cougars, especially defensively, only allowing 79 rushing yards, zero passing yards. And the big key right here, I believe, is the St. Paul penalties three. Not used to seeing a St. Paul team commit any kind of penalties. They got 12 yards for those that do have the turnover. But really, it's been the Crestview offense here tonight that has been dominant, driving the ball up and down the field really with Will. St. Paul only had the one lone stop at the goal line. They went for it on that third down, try to get some yards on that passing play, stop the clock, Crestview get the ball back and score. So that really has been the tail of the tape. Crestview up, er, uh, up in the first half, 20 to nothing. So moving into the second half now, the question is going to be, can the Cougars continue to move the ball offensively like they were able to in that first half? St. Paul never stopped them. They only were able to keep them out of the end zone the one time at about the half-yard line where they shut down Connor Morris. They're inches away from getting into the goal line. So this Crestview offense, as you mentioned, they were basically perfect. They moved down the field at will, played complementary football with the defensive unit too. So for St. Paul... Who is a second-half team, though, folks? They've had a couple of comeback wins. Are they able to do enough to slow down the Cougars where they're not adding on to that 20-burger right there? I think that's going to be the big question mark early here to start off the second half because Crestview will begin with the football. I think St. Paul needs to come out and get a big stop here on this opening possession for Crestview. Hold Crestview out of the end zone, get the ball back, get a score really quick, and control the time of possession. As you added, Brian, St. Paul a very uh, – Good at coming back against teams. They came back down to Plymouth. They were down two scores. They won that game 24-1. to And they also down to Eden and ended up winning that one 45-44. to So St. Paul, this is in their DNA. They they have the capabilities to come back against a tough Crestview team. But right now, the Crestview offense has been rolling, and the defense is there to combat that. And Hayden Kuhn's been leading the charge. And what a season he's been having so far. Gee, he is basically perfect on the season as it comes to taking care of the football. He's got 13 touchdown passes, 14 now after he threw one in that opening half. Hayden Kuhn has been a flat-out star in his junior season. And this is what I was talking about. When he has contact in the open field, he almost always is able to get away from it, create some more yardage, and throws on the money. They love moving the pocket because that's Hayden's bread and butter. He likes throwing on the run. He's been a dynamic playmaker for them all season long. Big reason why the Cougars are 8-0 and knocking on the door at 9-0 in a Fireland Conference Championship season. 
crucial piece to their success so far this season, sitting at 8 0, 55 of 78, 71% completion percentage, Ooh. over 1,000 yards, 13 touchdowns, now 14. And the big thing here is he doesn't turn the ball over. Here's Tanner Moore, came out on a fly. Flag comes in. He's knocked down at the 29, but the Cougars were holding. So they're going to back it up probably inside of their own 20-yard line. I think one of the big key takeaways from that first half was Crestview really was moving the ball up and down, and one of the main reasons was that offensive line. They were out physically in St. Paul, and you're not used to typically seeing that from a St. Paul team. They're usually very physical at the point of attack, but so far tonight, man, Crestview has been in control really all night long. See if the Flyers get a little bit more aggressive defensively as back-to-back -back penalties for Crestview to open up this second half. Hurting themselves, it'll make it first down and 15 now. That was one of my keys of the game for Crestview was not to play behind the sticks. You can't shoot, them, shoot yourselves in the foot, especially against a tough St. Paul defense who's only allowed just over 100 points this season in total. Don't want to Shoot yourself in the foot, get pushed back. Now a long first down opportunity. Kuhn under center. Hands, Morris coming near side. Stacked up a big pile there at the 14-yard line. Only a gain of two. So St. Paul getting a couple breaks with Crestview's huge miscues. And now it shrinks the playbook down on first and 15. You know, you got to run the ball quick and see if St. Paul can pin their ears back, get to the quarterback if they do end up passing the ball, or see if they stay conservative. Here's Morris again, already over 100 yards. And wow, look at the contact, creating the contact himself at the 25, shooting a defender a full yard. That head of steam, man, he is like a freight train in a small package. As I said, it shrinks the playbook. You typically run the ball on the first and 15, second and 15 opportunity, but it doesn't matter here as Crestview's offensive line is creating huge holes and Connor Morris, when you got a back that special and that great on his feet, he just bolts the defender over man and put him to the ground. Heck of a run and heck of a play for the Crestview offense. It actually makes it third and just about one yard. They're gonna come near side and St. Paul snuffs it out. Berger bursting into the backfield, drops him for a short loss. And for the first time tonight, the punt unit out on the field for Crestview, exactly what St. Paul needed. Definitely what St. Paul needed right there. Getting the stop on third and short. Ben Berger coming up clutch for his Flyers, giving them a chance to get back into this game. Let's see if they can get some great field position on this punt return. Two men back deep. Fisher. And that one's going to skip, take a couple of nice Crestview bounces and rolls and shakes, and it's going to rattle all the way down to about the 12-yard line. So a huge booming punt of about, what, 60 yards there. Yeah, that was an incredible punt. Totally flips the field. And special teams, man, come in the factors, definitely in big spots right here, and Owen Barker right there flipping the field. St. Paul really didn't get the big of advantage there. Now they're going to be all the way back at their own 12-yard line, see if Crestview can maybe force some of the airs here, see if St. Paul can, force, or can create a turnover. Flyers pitch it, coming near side. And a nice tackle on the play. Raymer came up to help make the stop. Look like Mason Ringler also in on the tackle. Really, besides, I believe it was the third drive for St. Paul. They really haven't done anything offensively. They need a big score here that would flip momentum. You don't want to give it back to Crestview's offense and see if they can go up four scores and really just cook this one open. Direct snap to Will Sieber. He's going to uncork one downfield. Incomplete. Intended for Aiden Cusser. So third down long on the way for the Flyers. Going with a little trick play there was Will Steber trying to get it down to Aiden Kusser, but 
If he would have looked across the field, he had Josh Pacos really running wide open down the middle of the field. Would have been a tough throw, but if he could have got it to him, that would have been six for the Flyers. Pivotal third down here for St. Paul. Don't want to get off the field right away, and this is going to help. Another penalty against Crestview. Encroachment. So it'll make it a bit easier. Third down and four now instead of third and long. A little bit more manageable for the St. Paul offense now. Really can get back in to the playbook and what they love to do, and that is run the football and be physical up front. Let's see if they do so. And we already know four down territory is pretty much anywhere on the football field for the Flyers. Fisher through the air. Incomplete. Still looking for his first completed pass of the night. And so it's fourth down, and the punt unit trotting on here for St. Paul. Really surprised to see St. Paul drop back and shotgun and throw the ball there. Third and four, third and manageable, really. Typical spot to run the ball, but they elect to go for the pass. Nothing was there. Great defense from Crestview as they sent out the punt team. Perkins to punt. Raymer back to receive, and it's going to go high over his head. And he's just going to knock it out of the back of the end zone. Safety. Huge miscue for the Flyers right there. And that really is the price you pay with punt deep in your own territory. You get the high snap, couldn't collect it, and it's going to roll out of the back of the end zone for a safety. Heads up play, though, from Tyler Perkins just to you know, let it roll out of bounds so they can have the two points and don't elect maybe a Crestview Cougar to hop on that ball and get a touchdown. So the Cougars add two to the scoreboard, and they'll get the football back here. As Perkins will have to come back onto the field and punt it deep. Sharing a couple of text messages at the half with a few people out there watching about how impressed they were with Crestview. And Coach Will says, go ahead and book it. Crestview versus Carey, baby, for the regional <laughs> title. He's already excited. That will be a revenge game from Crestview. I was at that Carey. Crestview game when they all thought it was Crestview's year, but Carey, man, slammed the door on that opportunity. Carey, another perennial powerhouse. I feel like they've always been good in football since I've been around, typically dominating that area up there in the Northern 10. So could see that, Brian, here. I believe that would be, what, a regional maybe, regional final? It would indeed, depending on how the seating all shakes out. But want to take care of business here first. Long way to go in the second half, and as mentioned, St. Paul has been a second-half team. We saw they had a couple of big comebacks, gave Eden their only loss of the year, and then Plymouth as well. In both situations, they were down double digits and then came back in the fourth quarter to win as Crestview avoids a little bit of disaster there. Raymer bailing him out, picks it up. He pulls it out to the 45-yard line, so quality field position for Hayden Kuhn in this Crestview offense coming up. Making something out of nothing. I believe that was Tanner Moore who dropped it, but Addison Raymer, right place, right time. That could have been bad for the Cougars if St. Paul could have picked that ball up. They would have been in plus territory. But nonetheless, Crestview gets another shot to add some more points on the board. And I'm assuming they're going to try to milk some clock as well. Going to bring Raymer in motion. Fake it to him. The give is near side. Morris, big cut. The burst gets him 13 yards on a first down gain. As they move the chains, and he has been electric so far tonight. St. Paul has not had an answer for number three. Look at the two hogs pulling around and creating the easy lane for Connor Morris to run right up the gut. And typically it's been one or two guys that's been bringing him down. One of these are going to go the distance if he can make those guys miss and get into the back of the end zone for six. Cougars with a twin set look but they'll just keep it on the ground. Bloodheart, he's got a gain of three. And Travis Barty filling me in that the Lucas coaching staff is in attendance, and of course, they're in second place right now in their Division Seven Region 25 area behind only Norwalk St. Paul, so they're big Cougars fans here tonight. Yes, yeah, St. Paul, if they would, will come on to come back and win this game. They would pretty much lock up number one, barring anything really crazy. And with a Crestview loss, they would drop to seven. But so far, Crestview looking to move up to probably number two with a big win here tonight. 
Crestview in Division 6, Region 22, as mentioned. Sitting at number four right now, Archbald's number one. I don't think they can get enough computer points playing against a Division Seven opponent tonight to vault, but they could overtake Carey for the number two spot. Columbus Grove sitting at number three right now. Crestview's going to spread them out here on third down. Play action. Kuhn looking right. Nice looking catch by Barker. And I think he's got enough for the first down. He will. That ball was on a rope. Hit Owen Barker right in the hands. An incredible catch. See on the scout construction replay. Barker with sticky hands, man. Just sticks him right up there. Catch it, gets the foot inbounds, and that will be a catch. And he got popped right away, so you always appreciate a receiver that's willing to give up the body for the catch. Huge first down right there for Crestview, staying on the move. And again, they go with Morris. Get a couple of bodies out in front of him. He's able to churn out three yards on the carry. And a flag comes in after the play. I think that one's going to go against St. Paul on sports and light conduct. I think there was a push in the back. Flyers potentially losing their composure a little bit here. Down three scores. Haven't been able to get it going on either side of the football tonight. Certainly haven't been able to slow down this Crestview offense. And now the penalty going to give Crestview another first down. Puts him in the red zone as well for the fourth time in the game. Make it the fifth. Morris on the counter play. Gets a nice block. And he slung down right at about the six. What a night so far here from Crestview. Looking to punch it in to add to their total. Looks like Kuhn mishandled the snap. Was able to get it out there. And Gotsi leading the way, leading the charge. Put a nice block out there on Quincy Krabs. And Connor takes it down to, I believe, the six or seven yard line. They got the student section in the back of the end zone. I know they would love to celebrate with another Cougar touchdown here. Crestview likes to throw it when they get down into the zone. They keep it on the ground this time with Morse. Morse has a couple and another late flag comes in after the play. And this one's gonna go against the Flyers again. Like that one's going to go against Aiden Kusser. And I know Coach Livengood, he is probably heated over there on that sidelines. Absolutely cannot lose your composure in a big game like this, especially when you're down 22 points with 6-19 remaining in the third quarter. So it'll be first down and goal for Crestview from the three. Bowling the lead back. Morris behind him. And Morris is going to cut it in. Third touchdown of the night for the little engine that always can. Getting it done again. Not one, not two, but three scores here, Brian, tonight for Connor Morris. As you see, the student section used to seeing this by now. Connor Morris get into the end zone again. I believe now he is up to 26 touchdowns on the year. So approaching some history here for the Cougars. It's a good career for a lot of players. And Morris, you don't want to say that he came out of nowhere, but he kind of did. Yeah. He had to wait for his turn, and he's taken full advantage of it as Crestview's lining up to go for the two-point conversion. Play action, Kuhn. Lob into the back of the end zone. Too tall for Barker. And you want to talk about a workhorse tonight. How about the numbers for our guy, Mr. Morris? Ooh, 32 carries, 159 yards, and three scores, Brian. Connor Morris has been getting it done. What a man among boys. And credit his offensive line, too. They've been opening up some huge holes, and Cressy was looking to put up 30 points to get this to a running clock, but wasn't successful to do so. So up four scores is Crestview. St. Paul, if they want any shot, they got to get a touchdown on this next drive. Four scores, and 10 years ago, the last time Crestview was able to beat the Flyers in great position to do it here in a much different fashion than they did way back in 2011 where Crestview had to come back late. 
but still 18 minutes, 11 seconds remaining in this game. This is one of those programs that you can never, ever count out. However, St. Paul is a team, they just compete a little bit better when they can play from ahead because of the way that they can churn out yardage on the ground. Very similar to how you see the Lucas Cubs play. I know OS Report fans have seen a bunch of them over the last several seasons. So this is a tough spot, and I don't know that they have a very hefty section of their playbook that opens things up to throw it and try to come back from down four scores on limited time. Right, it's hard to run that that, that kind of offense, the wing T style. Same kind of with Lucas. When you get down, it's tough to come back because you're not you got to force to pass the ball, and you get out of your comfort zone. They're used to running the ball, and as you mentioned, Brian, St. Paul, 69 points all year in the first quarter. They start off pretty hot, but not tonight. They've got a goose egg up on the board, and they struggle, you know, in the second half of games. Other than the two, they came back against Plymouth and Eden. So let's see if they can get something going. And this kickoff is going to be from Ben Berger, and he's going to get it down to the 32-yard line. Flyers need to dig deep. Can't eat a sandwich all in one bite. Well, unless you're G-Man or Storm, I guess you know <laughs> some people can accomplish that feat. My point is, you just you gotta you gotta accomplish the mission just one bite at a time here. So get a few chunk plays, try to get in the end zone one time, and then move from there. I think for St. Paul, you can't try to just come out and chuck it through the air, or look for deep balls right away. And they won't. They'll keep it on the ground here, first down. And it's going to produce maybe a couple of yards on the run by Craps. See if St. Paul continues to run the ball. See if they can catch the Crestview defense falling asleep, hit them with a play action pass over the top. They've had a few opportunities tonight. They had the one on third down before Crestview scored on that last possession of the second quarter. But they got to get back into this game fairly quickly. Sling it out here near side. Berger didn't get the blocking set up like he wanted. Zimli only able to pick up about a gain of one. And quickly it's third down. And Crestview's done great tonight on the early downs, forcing St. Paul to get out of their comfort zone where they're in positions where you either got to think it's – Four down territory and or go through the sky. And they're going to come out here, spread things out, three receiver set. Fisher looking to the left all the way. Exit the pocket, and that's knocked down. Briar Gotze coming over to swat it. And the defense of Crestview continues to stand tall. It's been a pack of Cougars all night long, just swarming the ball, and Briar Gotze right there gets his fingertips on it, knocks that one away. And St. Paul being forced to pass the ball. They're not used to it. No, no, no. It almost looked like, you know, maybe if he wanted to extend, trying to make a two-handed catch, yeah. bring it in for a pick. But instead, he just went with the full-on Matumbo, <laughs> whacked that thing to the ground like he was killing a fly. So they punt it away, does Perkins. Raymer just lets it bounce. And it will come to a halt at the 22-yard line. So Morris Company right back out onto the field. See if he can continue his incredible performance. Definitely has carried the load so far for the Cougars offensively. I think Eric Will might have been the only – Person to predict this kind of score, Brian. Not sure a lot of people seen this one coming. Crestview, they can get another touchdown. This could be a potential running clock scenario so far, man. It has been all Cougars. And, and congrats to them so far, especially on senior night two, getting a big win if they can hold on. Just let you know that our guy in Coach's Corner on Friday nights on the pigskin, he's the real deal. He knows what he's talking about. He's been telling us for weeks. Has he not on the show? Yeah, I mean, we, we got definitely. it on record. It's on video that they were going to win by multiple scores. So far, it looks like he's a, got a little bit of Nostradamus running through his blood. He also said it would come from the Crestview defense, mm. and St. Paul got the goose egg on the scoreboard. Let's see if they can prove him wrong, get a stop, and get the ball back into Eli Fisher's hands. Stop Morris for a gain of only one on first down. As they come out, twin set here to the near side. They run it opposite way. And Morris somehow found a cutback lane. Turned out eight when it looked like he was going to be dead to rights in the backfield. 
This kid's awesome. Great running back. Going to be a legend here for the Crest you running back. You want to model your game after this guy. Just nothing there. Puts his foot in the ground. Takes it across field. Something they tell you not to do, but it doesn't matter when you're that special of an athlete. Connor Morse, big time game and heck of a player that he is. Exceptions to so many rules when you got the talent, man. That trumps all. First down, Bowen. Hit right at the line of scrimmage. Don't think he picked up anything. But for Crestview, biggest factor now, you know, just take some time off that clock. Keep moving the chains. Keep the ball out of Fisher's hands. And you're going to leave here tonight with big smiles. Be 2-0 and on your brand new beautiful turf. And what do you think of it, G? You know, your first time out here on a game night. But pretty nice. Yeah, it's definitely one of the better fields in the area, in my opinion. It is gorgeous to come out here. It's a little bit different than seeing it in person than it is just seeing some of the pictures, but incredible view up here from the press box. Kuhn loads up, lobs it deep. Barely missed Smedley on the play as Crestview elects to take a shot. And uh, passes the ground, so it'll be third down nine. Don't mind this here. Just trying to stomp on their throats. Stops the clock, gives St. Paul an opportunity to get a stop here, get the ball back in the third quarter and see if they can put some points on the board. But Cressy trying to go for the juggler here, Brian. Put this one away early and get the running clock going. And especially with Hayden Kuhn, how well he's played. Almost never turning it over. This time you see the blitz coming off of the edge from Berger. Forces Hayden basically to just tuck it and run right away. Picks up one yard, but it'll be fourth down. Punt unit on the way out. Nice call from the defensive staff of St. Paul to force Kuhn really to pull it down and just take what he could get. Only a couple yards, and now St. Paul's going to get the ball back on the offensive side. Clock rolling under two and a half minutes to go here in the third. Barker. And over end punt. And it's going to be muffed by Caden Maxwell, who eventually just falls on it. So St. Paul will take over at the 25-yard line, starting to run out of chances. Definitely got to get points on this drive, or I'm basically going to put him to bed. Yeah, you need some kind of points here, especially with the kind of offense they run. The running style first, pass second, but as we mentioned before, they've had a few opportunities to hit some receivers, just not able to cash in on those opportunities. So a struggle so far for St. Paul, really running the ball and passing. Run it straight ahead, first down. Into a mess of about 30 bodies, it looks like. Like a Game of Thrones fight battle scene out there. Just guys all piled on top of each other. Pick above a couple. Run it near side this time. Crabs looking for a cutback. Was able to hit a lane. Nice blocking on the outside from St. Paul. Open up that lane for Quincy Crabs. Gets the first down for St. Paul. That will stop the clock and help out the Flyers. And for St. Paul, I think you're cool continuing with the run game just so long as you go with tempo like you see right here. you got to get in and out of the huddle quick. Every last second really going to become big here as Pocos shimmies his way forward for about seven yards. And the Flyers looking to break it into Cougar territory for the first time here in the second half. Clash of bodies right there. Caden Cunningham against Pocos. Men up in the hole. Big time run, though, for St. Paul. And they continue a little bit quicker, getting in the huddle, getting out of the huddle, and running the football. They might be able to creep back into this one. They need three. Crabs still moving. Him and Bowen were basically 
by doing the tango there for a while. Got pushed in the back for a few extra yards, and they're out to the Crestview 45, gain of 10. Crestview brings the heat, and it opens up to the outside. Stiber taking it wide, and the run game doing its thing right now for St. Paul. We, we haven't seen him have consistent effectiveness in this game with the exception of one drive so far. So this, this is one of the more sustained possessions that they've had. And they'll run it again. Trying that right side. Pocos this time not with the same success that he had been enjoying. And I believe that's going to be the final play of the third quarter. We will head to money time with the Cougars. Well out in front. They lead it. 28 zip. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. It's third down, two yards needed for St. Paul to open up quarter number four. They're going to get all of that and a couple of extra. Brian Skrowski, Garrett Parlett with you here on the call from Olivesburg. Shiny new turf here for the Cougars. They had a ribbon cutting ceremony earlier tonight. It is senior night, and they have had some standout performances by some 12th graders here, in particular Connor Morris leading the way to this 28-0 advantage. A lot of shine on this game tonight as Cressy's really been all over St. Paul. Starber's going to take this one up the middle. We're going to get a flag on the play. Churning those legs for extra yardage. Got a couple yards on the play. This one's going to go against St. Paul, and they've had some penalty issues in this second half. Uncharacteristic of this program, but it just hasn't been their night. It really, they set the tone. We talked about this on a couple of occasions. They went for it on fourth down in their own territory on the opening drive to kind of show Crestview, you know what? We're still right. the big bad kings of the conference. And after the Cougars stopped them, they immediately scored. And then they stopped them again and went down and scored again. And Crestview just, you know, they've never let off the gas. And St. Paul's never really recovered. And that's typically how opposite, it usually works the opposite way. Right. Crestview usually gets stopped by St. Paul, and St. Paul marches down and scores. But tonight, it's been a whole role reversal. I don't think a lot of people seen this coming. Crestview out 28 to nothing late in the fourth quarter. Let's see if they can continue to do so. But Stiber, man, St. Paul's not going to go away without a fight. He gets back all that penalty yardage, 10-yard pickup. So it'll make it second down and 10 now. And while I was not as bold as to pick St. Paul in this game, I was really hesitant to pick Crestview just because of what I've seen. I've been covering football in this area for over 10 years now, and it just seems like every time we would have the conversation, it's the Cougars' year, it would be a bit of a letdown when they would get to this game. But, man, i got to keep going back to Coach Will. He's he been telling us, man, <laughs> just a little bit different this season. Ooh, that's a little bit different run. How about Krabs breaking away, still running as well. Woo. Four broken tackles and a touchdown. The Flyers not going to say die yet. They keep the pole stumping here with a big score. Not going away without a fight. Quincy Krabs right there. Beautiful play running through Crestview bodies. Nice block One, on the outside. Two. Three. And he's going to walk the tightrope too, Brian. 
and then dive for the pylon. Heck of an effort. He's going to shove off Caden Cunningham <laughs> oh, man. and then shove off Tanner Moore and then dive in for the pylon, hit the pylon, stay in bounds, and it's going to be 7-28. to 28. Flyers not out of it yet. 32-yard touchdown run. I think this is the play of the game in my opinion so far. This would be my nominee, man. That's just hard nose running determination and just a little bit more want to than the other guys getting in diving for six see if that run gives st paul's defense some life to come out here get a stop now got some points on the board maybe some confidence back you know in the head only down 21 points 10 minutes remaining let's see what the defense can do for the flyers and i think it's a legitimate question at this point do you try to onside kick here right away I know your defense just made a stop, but that's the only time really right. tonight that you've been able to shut down Crestview. Do you try to make a special teams play and get the football back right away into the hands of Fisher and company? Well, Brian, your question is going to be answered here in a few short seconds, but Cougars definitely aren't going to be fooled if they yeah. kick a short. Looks like they did bring out the hands team, Brian. So Coach Haverdale thinking just like you. And I bet Perkins is going to do something a little bit. Yep. It's going to show that it's going to be an onside kick. And the Cougars only have a couple of guys lined up over to the side. I like the numbers for St. Paul. The football only traveled nine and three quarters yards, though, G-Man. St. Paul's taking it in for a touchdown right now, but the flag is coming out. Look at how close that was where the official threw the flag from. That really was inches away. If they could have let it go a few more inches, he could have grabbed that and went in. Yeah, that, I'm so confused on why Crestview didn't put more guys up close to the ball, as you mentioned before the play, and it was so close to getting it at 10 yards. It's just got to go to the 50. And watch this. It's at like the 49 and a oh. half. Oh, so, yeah, th that's the right call, but, oh, buddy, is that close. Man, if Krabs <laughs> could have just went and sat right at the 50 and grabbed that, man, that would have been a huge momentum swing. But I was almost rooting for it. Krebs is going to get a big break here. Still some discussion, actually, but the flag was thrown. He, oh, whoa. Well, <laughs> maybe what I was rooting for is going to stand true. All right, we got to see this one more time. So I think clearly the flag was the right call. I could tell in, in real time at full speed that he grabbed it just a bit early because it's where he touches the football, not where he ends it up right. with it, okay? So he does end up on the other side of the 50, which is okay, but he touched it at the 49 and a half. Big time call right there and big time play from the St. Paul special teams. They are going to get the ball back, Brian. Here we go. This could get interesting real fast. Cougars stack the box. They show nine. The ball was loose on the ground for Steber. He was able to get one yard out of it. Avoided total disaster, though. St. Paul could have gave the ball right back to him. A little bit of an error on the snap. Steiber just in the right place, right time. Picked it up. Got what he could. Only a few yards, but I'm still shocked at that call, man. That was a big-time play. Full backfield yet again. Crabs left side. Not oh, sure oh. how he was able to sneak through. Got skinny and look at the feet <laughs> still rumbling, bumbling down the sideline to the 33. Pick up a 15 yards when it looked like he was going to get dropped for maybe a gain of one or two. That sideline, Brian, has got life now. Quincy Crabs, what a run, and has really been off of his legs. He had the touchdown earlier, walking the tightrope, and here he is just bouncing oh, my off bodies, throwing Owen Barker to the <laughs> ground and carrying Kidding Cunningham down to the 28-yard line. So big-time play from St. Paul. They got some momentum. Feed the beast, which is exactly what they're going to do. Crabs, a man on a mission right now. Gang tackled this time. Was able to get two more yards. Actually, it was Steber. But let's go back to that previous run. One. And let's see Barker just two, get tossed. Three. Four, five. Wow. And, and the Took ability seven to stay guys up. To, the, to bring him down eight. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Second down, they try the left side. And it's Krabs. Third down, right about five needed here for St. Paul. Official's going to blow the play dead. Not, not sure what it was. Maybe yeah. the play clock didn't reset or something. So St. Paul rushes right back up to the line. Steber right side. Big Cole leaps his way through and then falls across the 20. That's going to move the chain gang. This already feels like a completely different St. Paul team, Brian, from the first three quarters. They got some life after the touchdown. Running a little bit more physical and really bowling Crestview defenders over and great blocking from the Flyers up front as they're looking to punch this one in and make it only a two-score game. Crabs to the left side, looking for it to develop, and it won't. About three Cougars all converge to bring them down. So you see that mess of bodies. And they figure it out now. That's what it takes to bring down Mr. Krabs. You got to get about five, six hands on them and just all rip them to the turf. Basically no gain on the play. Play action. Fisher rolls left. A lot of room to the outside. Dragged down by the ankles. Right at the sticks. So if it's not a first down, it'll be third and real short. Heads up play from the QB Fisher. There was no containment from the defensive end on the outside. I believe that was Barker. He got blocked into the inside. Fisher heads up play, get out of there, get the first down. I know it's gonna bring up third down, excuse me, in short. They'll run it straight ahead. Little Steber's got the first down and it'll be first and goal on the way. So things could get interesting. A lot of time still remaining here if St. Paul can get in the end zone in the next couple of plays and not milk too much off of the seven and a half minutes remaining. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to try to score within the next 30, 30, 40 seconds to see if they can get it done. They'll keep it on the ground. Great tackle. Just nothing there. Stop made by Sean Bailey. So they continue to rotate these backs. Pocos that time with the carry. But for my money, I'm just going to give it to Krabs. Yeah, I think that's definitely the go-to guy here in this situation because so far it's took about the whole team to bring him down, Brian. Yeah, he'll get it right here, second down. But the teeth of the defense clamps down on him. And so for Crestview, it's best case scenario now. You got him into a third down situation. Some time coming off of the clock. Yep. Can the Cougars D come up with a goal line stand? Third down, Steber to the right. And he's brought down short. It's going to be the biggest play in Crestview football and probably the past decade, Brian, coming down to the wire. St. Paul can punch this one in. They're right back in this game with six minutes remaining, but the fans are getting on their feet and getting loud here. Yeah, I'd like to see the student session get a little bit more lit. Like, where, where are you at? Here comes Krabs. Hit down low. I don't know if he got it. The officials say... No bueno. Cougars back with the football. Big time stand from the Crestview defense. Let's see on the replay. They're going to give it to Krabs. He's been the main man, and he's going to get stopped just shy of that touchdown. And Crestview now looking to run this one out and get that Firelands Conference trophy basically wrapped up. 
monumental play for the Cougars. You didn't want any doubt creeping into your brains. Big stop right there. Morris with the carry on first down. Didn't go too far. But what's most important now, of course, for the Cougs is just running out this last five and a half minutes. Doesn't matter how you do it. Cougars line up with eight seconds now showing on the play clock. Kuhn taking his time. Takes a snap at four. Morris. Great jump cut. Even better tackle by Steber. Otherwise, he was going to be off to the races. This man is definitely a special player. Connor Morse right here almost took this one to the barn. Incredible jump cut showing off the athleticism. If Cressy can get a first down here, they might be able to run this clock out as we are approaching four minutes and 40 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. And you can tell that you're out in Olivesburg when the reference is taking it to the barn <laughs> instead of to the house. Makes sense. Cougars need three. St. Paul loading up the box as Kuhn takes the snap. Four on the play clock. And Morris, I think, is going to be real close. Give him the first down. Why not? He's earned it tonight. He has been the bell cow all year long, and tonight is really shown against a great St. Paul defense. He can do it against the toughest of competition, getting it done. Connor Morris, as he's hoping his Cougars can hold on to victory, if they can get a few more first downs, they should be your Filings Conference champions. I imagine this got to bring great joy. I know that you try to stay you know, neutral when you're calling the game, G, but I mean, let's not sugarcoat this thing. Crestview alumni, football player here that graduated just a few seasons ago. To see them come out and play St. Paul this tough, got to be jumping for joy on the inside. Yeah, it's great to see. I went to school with a lot of those guys down there. Coach Haverda obviously was on the coaching staff when I was there, so happy for them. It's a great game. As long as Crestview can hold on, they will be the Firelands Conference champions. And it's been a while. St. Paul, I know they're not going to be happy with coming down here and losing for the first time in 10 years, but they're a heck of a program, man, and they, they, they'll continue to have great success under Coach uh, John Livingood. Got deafeningly quiet here <laughs> as they hand it off to Bolin. Gets driven down just shy of the 20. And three minutes remaining here. St. Paul with all three of their timeouts. If Crestview doesn't get this first down, I imagine the Flyers will burn their first T.O. of the night. And it's going to be Morris, the feature back. He's got it right side. And hit by about three Flyers defenders all at once. So no gain on the play. Fourth down coming up. No timeout, though, taken by St. Paul. wonder if coach for St. Paul is kind of playing if they don't get this first down. Maybe to keep the timeouts for the next possession. But nonetheless, looks like he is finally going to call the timeout a little a little late. Yeah, a little curious about that, but they do get the timeout. Two minutes and five seconds remaining as Cressy really gets this first down. That should be all she wrote for the Cougars. Great performance tonight on both sides of the football for the Cougars. Not easy going against these St. Paul Flyers and just the allure that they bring to the field. And I know that it's kind of that way for every team in the Firelands Conference, but it just seems like it's a little bit bigger and more 
challenging when you play St. Paul when you're Crestview. That, that's at least been the storyline that I've been reading about since I've been covering football here in this area for the last 10, 12 years. It seems as if every time when I was in high school, they were always the great team, and we had a few good schools, and, or a few good teams, excuse me, and we could never get over St. Paul. They would always come in and typically dominate us in pretty convincing fashion, but Crestview's going to get the best of them tonight, as so it seems, up 21 points in the fourth quarter. And some notes that maybe, you know, restaurants closing in St. Paul at about 10 o'clock, the Firehouse in particular, so Flyers, oh, the Freight House, excuse me, so the Flyers trying to get back home, get a late dinner. Great looking punt. Off the fingertips. And so that return goes nowhere for Caden Maxwell. That's really been the story all night. I think a lot of this has been kind of St. Paul shoot themselves in the foot, a couple of miscues, a lot of penalties. That is super uncharacteristic for a Flyer squad. And Crestview has completely capitalized on those and looking to hold on to be a Firelands Conference champion. And a ton of playoff points, too, as we talked about. Imagine that in Region 22 of Division 6, a win over St. Paul, a 7-0 team, likely will vault the Cougars up into the number two spot. But actually, our resident Joe Lenardi, Travis Berardi, I believe, has already calculated and knows specifically. <laughs> so with the win here tonight, Travis, tell us, where will Crestview end up in the standings? They'll be second. They'll be second in the region right behind Archbold. They'll jump carry. They'll be in third. So next week, they'll need the win, but it looks like they're going to be getting two home games. But bonus points and everything with that. But they will at least clinch one home game tonight if they hold on here, and they might be able to get two in a top two seed if they win next week. Well, there is the full breakdown for you folks. Always keeping it real is Joe Lenardi and Mr. Trav. Big Mac Trav, the new nickname we got me and Swarm came up, old Big Mac Trav. <laughs> well, as many McDonald's bags as he used to go through, I think that's a very fitting nickname. <laughs> as they go to the air, do the flyers, but the ball is loose, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Aiden Cusser. So it'll be second and ten. And they had it set up to perfection. Yeah. Might have heard the footsteps just a little bit as Bailey was able to get by that block. Fisher throwing back to the middle of the field. Maxwell with the catch, slung down. Cunningham with the tackle. It'll be enough to move the chain, stop the clock with 57 ticks remaining. What a night here for the Cougars. Going to hold on here and get a big win. And Shout out to Coach Haverdale, man. Coming in, going to be the only coach in 10 years to pick up a win against a St. Paul team, a very tough school to play. Going back to the sky, Maxwell. Second straight reception. Nine yards this time. And then a big stick by Cunningham on the far sideline. And once again, Caden Cunningham on the stop for the Cougars. Brings up second down in about a yard for Norwalk St. Paul and the ball spotted at the 30. Fisher short arms at this time. One hopped it on the intended target. So I think it's okay to start looking to the future. Crestview is going to be 9-0, G-Man. And they get Mapleton on the road next week, a 3-5 team. So a 10-0 season definitely looks like it's going to be in their grasp. Yeah, they should be able to go on the road and beat Mapleton. Now with the new rivals changed around, Crestview is Maples, Mapleton's rival. So throw all the records out the door, usually on those kind of games. Rivals, records don't matter. You want to win that game regardless of how good you are. So Crestview's going to be in a dogfight, but I think they're going to be able to pick up that win and be 10-0 for the first time in a long time. And for Norwalk St. Paul, they're going to have to bounce back from their only loss of the season. They do get to go back to the friendly confines of Norwalk 
Monroeville coming to their place. And that's an up-and-down Eagles team that's been kind of confusing to me. I haven't been able yeah. to really get a pulse on what they're all about this year, but just three wins so far. So you imagine both of these teams going to get healthy next week with wins, head into the postseason. In all likelihood, I imagine both will be number two seeds in their region. Yep, I believe Mapleton did beat Monroeville. So Monroeville, as you mentioned, a very up-and-down squad. So really, man, high school football, you never know what can happen on any given night in St. Paul. Going to drop the two seed. Obviously, they wanted the one. Lucas probably is going to up into that one, into the seed, and host two home games. With the expanded playoffs, you know, at first, I didn't know what to think about it, but more playoff football than normal. Right. I guess I'm cool with an extra week. Yeah, definitely. Some teams that usually don't get in are going to get to play and maybe get a shot, man. You might find you're going to find a lot more Cinderella stories, so it could be a very fun year for high school football in the postseason. Fisher loads it up, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Raymer makes a play, knocks it down. Maxwell was the intended target. You can feel it in the air, Brian. These fans are ready to scream. Players on the sidelines are jumping up and down. They're ready. Just only 30 seconds away until they finally get to say they have beat St. Paul. This Crestview defense is really good at every single level. The more that I see them in person, the more impressed I am. I think this is the fourth time that I've got to call one of their games at the beginning of the year. I thought the secondary was the, was the standout unit. As the season's gone along, I really like what the defensive lines have come about. And then the linebacking core. Those five guys, they swarm to the football. They've made it hard on St. Paul to get any type of sustained drives going throughout the course of the night. At all three levels, this team does not have a weakness. I truly do believe that this might be the best defense I've seen all season. Yeah, they impl implemented that stack. Tim Scheid coming over, being the defensive coordinator for Crestview, and then they shoot off of those D linemen. Briar Gotze, one of those guys in the backfield, typically making plays, and Sean Bailey as well. So Crestview, they got studs, man, at all three levels defensively. Probably the best defense I've seen all year long as well. Trying to hold St. Paul to just seven points on the night. Third down, Fisher flushed. He's going to go to the air, to the corner. Incomplete. Fourth down and 10 and just 20 seconds to go. Seems like this last minute's taken an eternity. Probably the same for the student section. I bet they're ready just to come rushing out on the field. Crestview's really been doubted all year long. Nobody thought coming in, losing four all Ohioans, high ones, they could get it done, and they've done better than the team last year. And Fish is going to load up on fourth down, and this is going to be it. Well, let's see what he can do. He's going to get it out to his receiver, but what a hit. I believe that was Connor Morris coming off, and Crestview is going to hold on and beat St. Paul 28-7, to barring any kind of miracle. <laughs> <laughs> It'd take more than a miracle now, G. They need about a point a second here, or a touchdown a second. And I think very fitting that Morris was the dude to come up, mm, lay the stick, brought the wood right there, incomplete. And the Cougars are about to run this baby out. Now you can feel it. Now it's starting to get electric. Everybody up on their feet here on the home side. Olivesburg is going to be the place to party in Ashland County tonight. You better believe that. Bonfire weather now too, G Man. Definitely. Perfect fitting evening for Crestview. A cold night. They're gonna get it done as they beat St. Paul for the first time in 10 years, 28 to 7. And now a new king of the conference. These are your Firelands champions. The Cougars get it done. And great picture there of Connor Moore celebrating with his teammates. He's gonna be our Kissel's player of the game, no question about it, what he was able to do offensively. And then on the defensive end, too, pretty solid, very sharp. I think we're going to see if we can try to grab Connor right now for a quick interview. I actually know that they got some Cougars jacks to do, so Cougar we're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be right back. Final stats in an interview with our MVP, Connor Morris. Stay tuned.
Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Man, what should I listen to on the OH report today? Dude, listen to the Friday Night Pigskin. You got highlights and scores from all around the area. The OH Report podcast has more than just football. No, listen to the pigskin. The pigskin. 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 Podcast. Pigskin. Why not pigskin? Podcast. Podcast. Dude, clean your ears out, man. Bro, there's so much space in here. Time now for our Kissel Snow Removal MVP, Connor Morse. 40 carries, buck 86, three touchdowns against St. Paul. Your first wins against them since 2011. Just how's it feel? It feels so good. I can't even explain how I feel. Just pure excitement. I just, this is the funnest game ever. It, just, it feels amazing to beat them. Uh, just talk about your night. It seems like you guys won the line of scrimmage for just almost the entirety of this game, and you were able to run right through it. Props on line. They. They dominated the whole game. They they just made them made the holes and just they were just on fire and all credit goes to them. Their the line scrimmage are amazing. Now there were some people that doubted you early on, even I did, but you guys made me into a believer. Just how have you guys been able to do it? You lost multiple all Ohioans last year and you just replaced them and you got better. We just hard work, off season, weight room. It, it's all just a teamwork thing. We all have chemistry, we all wanna get better, we all wanna win. It just it takes that bond and just to push forward and just win every game. Uh, you get a, at least a share of the Firelands Conference, but you have one more game left against Mableton to clinch the first 
undefeated season since 2011. What do you have to do next week against Mapleton to clinch 10-0? Have a good week of practice, have a mindset, don't overlook them and just play. This is the next game, I can do every game. Just, this is the most important game of the season because it's the next one on the schedule and just play hard. Thank you, Connor. Our Kissel Snow Removal MVP. They do landscaping, but now that it gets cold, they do snow removal. We'll send it back up to the boys for some final stats and analysis. All right. Thank you, Travis and Connor Morris. What a dynamic playmaker this kid was throughout the entirety of the game. But Travis said it, and so did the coaching staff of Crestview in their huddle at the end of the game. The line of scrimmage was where they dominated tonight, G-Man, as a former big guy out here playing for the Cougars. That's got to be really satisfying to see them win at the point of attack against a team like St. Paul. That that's what they hang their hat on, man. That's what they bring into the equation just about every single night. Yeah, St. Paul typically a team that always wins the point of attack, always wins the line of scrimmage. You can always usually give that to them. But tonight it was a different story. It really was a different – we're not used to seeing this, man. We're used to seeing St. Paul over Crestview 28-7. This time Cougars 28, Flyers 7, a dominant performance for Crestview. Shout out that whole – to that whole team, man, and that whole coaching staff. They deserve this one. The Crestview Moving Company was moving some big items throughout the entire night as we are in our Simonson Construction post-game show. Let's take a look at the final stats here of the evening. And the Cougars, over 300 total yards tonight, most of them coming on the ground. They threw it when they had to, G-Man. And I think what was most impressive is that they were able to really keep St. Paul in check until that fourth quarter yeah. when things got a little bit crazy there. Yeah, St. Paul got the urge coming on in the fourth quarter and was able to claw back into this one and make it a sort of a game. Most of those rushing yards came from Quincy Krabs as he really kind of pushed the charge for the Flyers. But Crestview, a dominant performance and dominated defensively. That's the crazy part as they're, uh, they were up. 28-7, to seven. they win that one. St. Paul only gets seven points on the board. And Crestview, another dominant victory on their way, Brian, to be a Fire Islands Conference champion. I think it would be really hard just not to feel good for Crestview given all the turmoil that they have faced over the seasons in this matchup in particular. Ten years, man, since they beat this team. I can't really like fathom what that would be like your rivalry game and you can't win it year after year after year. And I think there's only been – two times over these last 10 years that people were like, hey, this is Crestview season, but they didn't get it done. This team is different, and I think it's pretty great to see it all come un unfold here tonight on their home turf. Brand new, beautiful facility here. Yep. Uh, j j just an awesome sight if you're a Cougars fan. And I think it starts at the pinnacle of that. Coach Haverdale has instilled this in his players. We're a different team. The past is the past, man. They're another great team on the schedule, and as I mentioned earlier, Coach Haverdale, the next game on the schedule is the most important game, and as you've seen in that interview, that's exactly what Connor Moore said. He's instilled that in his players, and they're ready for Mapleton, and they're ready for some postseason play to see if they can make this one, you know, an historic season. So Mapleton, I know that in years past, that, that's been a big arrival of Crestview. It's a Week 10 game, so typically you would put that at the end of the season. So uh, just quick initial thoughts on Mounties, Cougars, 2021. Yeah, as I mentioned, rivalry games, you usually just throw the records out the door because you want to win that game. It's about pride, and it's about not losing to your rival. You don't want to be the team. Yeah, we lost to the Mapleton. You know, th those colors are not favorable here at Crestview, so they're going to want to travel to Mapleton and get a big win. All right, and now we've got Steve Haverdale standing by with Travis Berardi. Take it away, Trav. Coach, 9-0. First time since 2011 you knocked off St. Paul. First of all, how's that feel? Oh, it's a great feeling. I mean, it's just to be 9-0 and to be able to, uh, you know, for all of our home games this year, which I know three were away, we, we went undefeated. Um, so that's two years in a row where we haven't lost on this field. Um, so and it, but it shows the work that these kids are putting in. Um, just talk about, you know, one of the keys today was going to be your offensive line in the trenches. They really went up to the task. I mean, Connor alone, 186 yards rushing. He went over 200 for the game, three touchdowns. They really battled tonight. They did. Uh, you know, when you play a great St. Paul team like like we do, you have to win offensive line, you have to win defensive line if you're going to win the football game. And we were able to do that. Um, we controlled it uh, the entire night, and, and it showed in the score. I know it's, it's another win for you guys, but this is a big win not only for this squad, but for alumni, for guys like Garrett, for – Mason Minnick, who, you know, they've watched, you know, nine straight years of losses to St. Paul. 
this has just got to be a good feeling, not for just for this team, but for everybody else that's battled, as well as Crestview Cougars. It is, and we talked about that before the game, that uh, when you step on this field against St. Paul, you're, you're playing for everybody in the community. You're playing for everybody that's, that wore the um, you know, the Blacks uh, uniforms on the field and, and play your hearts out. And those kids went out there and played for not only themselves, but our community and else, all of them that played football here at Crestview. And finally, you've clinched at least a share of the Firelands Conference Championship. You got Mapleton. You have one more to go in the regular season. I know you're going to want to celebrate this tonight. You get back to work tomorrow. But what do you need to do to knock off a Mapleton team who's come on strong as of late? Well, we got to get into work and watch film first and, and, and see what they're doing and uh, let our coaches go to work and, and put the game plans together and have a great week of practice and uh, be ready to go on Friday night. Congratulations, Coach. Go celebrate. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. The Cougars. Moving back up to number two in their region, they are co firelands Conference champions. They can clinch outright next week. We'll send it up to the boys to wrap things up. All right, thank you, Travis, and thank you, Coach Haverdill. Just an exciting night all the way around here at Olivesburg, and what an impressive performance by the Cougars as they win it 28-7. to Any last thoughts, G-Man, before we get out of here? <sighs> Congratulations out to Crestview and the boys getting it done. Get a big Firelands Conference win, and a Firelands Conference crown is on their way as long as they can hold on against Mapleton. They got a piece of it. They're looking to get the whole pie, Brian. I want to thank all of you guys for watching out there in Facebook and YouTube land, and I believe this is one of our highest viewed football games of the season. also want to thank our incredible staff, Adam Thompson up here producing Jory Hollenbeck on top cam. Storm Blunchley down on the sideline getting you those killer up close shots. Travis Berardi tracking some stats for us and doing some sideline reporting as well. For G-Man, I'm Brian Skaronski thanking our incredible sponsors too and saying goodbye from Olivesburg where we know there's going to be parties all over town when we leave. So long for now. <laughs>